There we go. The audio is ramped up. Here we go. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another Sunday night, Sunday afternoon, whatever time zone you're in kind of stream. Today we're playing Game Boy, as you can see. Uh, and I am I am joined, as always, by Audie Zerly up there in the PC-98 Audie Boy. <laughs> In the PC-98 Audi boy, it is not the portable CDI today. And over on the left there, hanging out in the game child, we've got a Sobe Tech himself, Quang. Hey, hey, how are you doing? Pretty good, dude. Welcome to uh, a DF Retro stream. We're playing Game Boy, and, you know, of course I wanted to ask you as a guest because you've been doing a lot of development work on the Game Boy. Been busy with the Game Boy, yes, for sure. So... We're start. We're gonna play a bunch of games today. I've got a ton of cartridges here, and I've decided it's it's maybe stupid, but I'm not really using emulation or anything. I've just got my Super NES here with a Super Game Boy Two, uh, a bunch of cartridges. I do have an EverDrive here on my side, but we're only using it for one game today, and it's to check out Quang's new game. Yeah, so be awesome. We'll get to that. So first of all, I decided to start with a banger, at least in my opinion. Uh, this is, um, Kid Dracula. So, you guys know this one, right? Of course. It's a pretty big game at the time, wasn't it? I always liked the music in this game a lot. The, uh, swing arrangements and such of the Castlevania music. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely. Classic. And Absolute also, classic is also the chat. Yeah. Be sure to let us know if the sound levels are okay. I think it's okay, but... I don't want the game volume to overpower uh, the speech, so we'll see how it goes. Well, my volume is raised up pretty loud today, <laughs> so you should be barely able to hear me, considering my natural volume. Oh yeah, exactly. And you might notice I'm actually looking off to the right on today's stream. Oh, I just that's bad. I shouldn't have done that. <clears throat> the reason I'm looking off to the right is I actually uh, set it up so I have a CRT ready to go. So I've got my direct feed to the CRT as well as the capture card so I can play without input lag. So do you think well, uh, do you see this as a canonical prelude to Symphony of the Night? Yes. Okay, so you take this into canon this whole game. I yes, absolutely. This is this All is right. pure canon. This is pretty much like um oh man, what am I doing? See, this is a problem with streaming. But uh you know there, there's this, there's Rondo of Blood, and then there's Symphony of the Night. It's like, it's you know, those are the three main games. That's all you need, really. Exactly. I think three, you know, like, is Castlevania three is probably my favorite. So I don't know. Okay, no, actually, Castlevania. Castlevania three is pretty darn good. I agree. Super Castlevania, I would take over pretty much all of them. <laughs> Rondo for me. Has to be Rondo. Yeah, Rondo, Rondo is my favorite traditional Castlevania, followed by Bloodlines, uh, followed by, um, uh, I guess, probably Castlevania Three. Because Castlevania Three is really good, but I mean, it's this really is... good. I didn't discover Bloodlines until much, much later. I mean, this is Vampire Killer. Yeah, yeah Vampire Killer here in Europe. <laughs> Oh no, no, was it a new uh, generation here? In yeah, Europe? Japanese version yeah. of Vampire <laughs> Killer. Which I yeah, managed right. to get finally this year for Japanese Mega Drive. That's one expensive uh, <clears throat> redacted. <Clock three. laughs> yeah. uh, for you, you don't know, actually, I collect all the Castlevanias. I have every single one now. Ah, uh, cool, Modi. Okay, so... How do I... So I selected the bat. Oh, there so, we go. Quang, you said you had all of them now? Yeah, even the Commodore Amiga, Commodore 64, IBM yeah, PC. I was just going to ask you that. I was going to ask you if you had the <laughs> Commodore versions. Do you Whoa. have it in like, big boxes even? Yep, all complete in box, every single one. I always found it interesting that those Konami games on the Commodore 64 came in those NES gray boxes, or the design. Oh, yeah. So you could kind of have an exp expanded gray box Konami set if yep. you collect those. I know there's a few out there. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think they did uh, Blades of Steel, Contra, and a few others. Yeah, Contra. Um, there are a few others, aren't uh, Life Force. Mm, oh, yeah. yeah. Not Life Force Tenko. <laughs> Not Life Force Tenko. But so, Life Force. but anyway, so so obviously, you know, there's probably some people wondering about um, 
Uh, so this game also exists on Famicom. I don't think it got a release in the West. It's like Akamajo. Yeah, there's a European release. There was? Okay, cool. Yeah, it's a European and, and a Japanese release. I have both. Excellent. Yeah, yeah on Game Boy. Yeah. Um, I see a blue box there in the chat. Oh, a Super Chat? Yeah. From Th Th Furious. Want to say I know the toxic toxicity is bad. Sorry, my reading comprehension in English is really bad. Uh, toxicity bad, but the mass majority of us are just excited for next gen and love games. Wishing you all the best, heart. Oh, thank you, well, dude. That's very nice of you. I appreciate that. It's oh, speaking of toxicity, uh, <laughs> even for me, who's just a guest contributor here, yeah, sometimes people are very intense about these new consoles. So, oh, uh, so this has the famous uh, censorship. This boss, the, yeah, the Manji, yeah, in the Western version. Yep. We are playing the Japanese version here, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> but yeah, you mentioned that oh, this there is the Japanese only, well, Japanese and European release, but it did get localized and oh. released in the collection recently for the Famicom. I turned away from the screen and I, he wasn't dead yet. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So, it's oh, interesting that they keep doing this now, that they keep localizing these old games and releasing them on the compilations that's a great idea so, i think especially yeah if, yeah this game is really solid though it's a lot of fun it's a little bit slow but it's got a really cool feeling to it and um well it has the perfect beat because if you listen to the music and see his walking speed and animation uh the whole game kind of has this uh, synergy between the elements so it should be this speed i think if yeah I, I agree yeah. Slower, it wouldn't work it, what the it also works well with the Game Boy screen. The Game Boy screen will blur too much if you move too fast. Right. So yes. A lot of games will slow down. So the first Castlevania on Game Boy is really slow. It is um, so slow. So to stop it. Yeah. <laughs> I always liked that first one though, even though it's I slow. I really like it. I really like it. Especially music, obviously. But I think I don't have that many issues. Even with most of the early Game Boy games, I don't have the issues that people generally point out. I think it's because I played them back when it came out. <laughs> So I just have this nostalgia for it. But, should, um... should I do the voice acting? No. Are oh my, ore samo uragite. No, I won't, I won't do that. Oh, okay. Super chat from Faisal 007 saying, "Are you guys excited for the analog pocket?" Dude, I was I'm very so, excited to yes. pre-order it. I'm super so, excited about it. Did you guys manage to get an order in? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. I missed it by 15 minutes. Man, it was so tight. The, the, I, I hope I hope Analog <laughs> starts opening up their orders for a little bit longer of a period of time. But yeah. So somebody asked earlier, how many games are we going to be playing today? Um, the answer is two. I've got like <laughs> just like piles of cards here. So we're not going to keep going on this one for long. You know, we're having some fun here. So... Um, let's go ahead and should we, should we switch to another game then? Get it going yeah, I on. Think, uh, I think a level per game generally is a good rule, don't you think? Since yeah. So many cards. Um, let's see here. What did I want to do next? So I'm dig I'm literally digging in the cards here, as they say. Uh, oh, I know a good looking one. This is uh one of my favorites for the Game Boy. Hopefully it actually works. We're gonna get to swap cards for real. See what happens. There it goes. Uh huh. So let me set up my controls first and change the colors. So, do you guys recognize this one yet? I know what this is. This is one of the rare ones. This is a classic. Um, yes, we are actually playing on a. We're using a Super Game Boy 2, so the nice. Lovely 90s transparent blue uh, on the Super NES. Well, you should explain, because there is a 1 and 2. Quickly explain to people okay, why so there's a 2. What's the difference? <laughs> so it's it basically, I mean, Quang, you know this as well. It's like it fixes like a yeah. timing issue with the with the refresh rate or something, or like the CPU yes. clock. Something's like a little off on the first one, and they mm -hmm. adjusted yeah. it. All right. And also they've added the, the link port, so you can link up yeah. together. Link. That, yes, exactly. Just so, because I'm guessing a lot of people aren't too familiar with 
the uh, Super Game Boy 1 and 2 differences, so good to just put it out there. Also, the same Super Game Boy 2 was only Japan only as well. Yeah, it's right. only Japan, yeah. It came out late, so it's a shame that they didn't do a Super Game Boy Color. That yeah. would have been excellent. Yeah. Can the Game Boy player on GameCube play? Yes, Game it can. So, I mean, yeah. te technically, that's, that's it. <laughs> so this is such a weird game, but it's quite beautiful, I think. This is a I trip like world this, from Sunsoft, uh, yeah. Yeah, this belongs with Gimmick and Hemidic, mm. I feel. That generation yeah. of yeah, like, just it's... incredible Sunsoft games. Exactly. It's great soundtrack as well. This yeah. one's like a weird, like peaceful platformer in a strange way. Like It's very unusual, but it's a cool game. I, I put it over there with Kirby. A little bit, yeah. Did this ever... This never got a, a release in um, the West. Oh, shoot. Did it? This was this was yes, Japan. I believe so. I think U.S. and Japan. Really? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jeez, I wonder. This is the, a this is a Japanese version, so I don't even know. Yeah, the Western one's really expensive. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. I have the Scandinavian cartridge of Gimmick on NES. I actually nice. got that this year. Well, you also have the Japanese version, so you're like. I also have the Japanese version in the box. You, you yeah. could pretty much retire. <laughs> I can. <laughs> if I had children, they would be safe for many years. So, Quang, you probably noticed one of the things they're doing here is, uh, maybe it's hard to see on the stream, but when you're underwater here, they're flickering on and off every other yeah. like refresh, which, of course, is yeah. a fun way to do transparent water because the Game yeah. Boy screen itself, the refresh rate is so slow that it ends up just looking transparent. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? So the, the clock speed is actually 15, just under 60 hertz. Per 60 hertz. Yep. So if you flicker it every other frame, uh, the refresh oh. doesn't keep up fast enough and you get that transparency look. Exactly. Here's another thing you don't see in too many Game Boy games. Audi knows what I'm talking about. Slopes. Slopes. <laughs> yes, of course. I so, was just waiting for it. What I've learned from that, though, it's less about, like, uh, I mean, of course, not having tiles with slopes on it will save you some memory, no doubt. But I'd imagine in a lot of games, slopes were avoided due to screen real estate. Where, like, when you're dealing with so few pixels, like, maybe it's, like, having, like, crazy slopes like you did in, like, you know, Super Mario Brothers 3 or something it might actually take up too much screen real estate. I don't know. So what, one of the problems you'll have is, because the screen is so narrow, it's on 160 pixels, pixels yeah. wide. If you're in the middle of the screen, you've only got 80 pixels ahead of you to see. So if you move forward too quickly, you're going to have problems there. Yeah, exactly. So that's... You do see them sometimes, but I... Yeah, I think it's more of a design thing. Like, if you look at Nintendo's games, for instance, like the Mario games and Wario games, none of them have slopes. It's all just 90 degree angles. Yeah. So, so I'm kind of curious uh, to ask both of you, what was your first uh, Game Boy game? Other uh, than Tetris. Well, if someone says Tetris, they can leave the stream. It was not Tetris. <laughs> Mine was uh, Mega Man The Wily Wars, I guess. Nice. Is that what Wait, it was? Uh, no, Dr. Wily's Revenge, you mean? Dr. Wily's Revenge. Sorry, I was just thinking, I was like, I always get these two confused. But yes, Dr. Wily's Revenge, uh, that was the first. The Game Boy special to me because it was actually the first system that I purchased um, with my own money, basically. Hmm. So. What about you? Uh, that would mean a lot. Uh, for me, my father went to America and got the Game Boy a year early for me because in the UK we didn't get to a year later than that. Oh, no and way. he brought back, uh, brought back the Game Boy, obviously the Tetris pack, but the game he bought for me was Super Mario Land, and I loved that to pieces. It's a good game. First one I got, well, I got two because my big brother got a game and I got a game, so I got Kung Fu Master, which is part next. <laughs> And uh, my brother got Balloon Kid, and I still love Balloon oh, Kid uh, quite a bit. It's great. Oh, yeah, Balloon Kid's a great game. If you play the two-player Link Up, you have his Balloon Fight. Yes. Oh, yeah. I always felt that game had a wonderful atmosphere, and of course music by Hip Tanaka. That's who, right. Uh, I had the pleasure of knowing, so it's fun to talk to him about that game. <laughs> so people are, are noticing the game child. You should probably yeah. we should probably explain like what the game child is and why you have one. You do have one, right? You didn't sell it. Yeah. Um, actually, I passed it on. Um, oh I, no! Only, re only recently, though. Only recently. Okay. Well, you've experienced the game child long enough. Yeah. So, so what is the game uh, child for people watching? 
So those who don't know, the Game Child, it was a knockoff <laughs> look, Game Boy lookalike. So I'm sure you're all aware of those LCD games you get for Ty- from Tiger and, and Grandstand and other companies like that. Um, but they basically mocked a Game Boy up and had these little one-off games on them. And it's, it's, it's the sort of thing that your parents would buy for you, not knowing what a Game Boy is. You'll bring it home and say, hey, I got you a Game Boy. And you're like, that's not a Game Boy. And we're, worse, worst, so you one. can't see it in the stream here, but it only has a single button, <laughs> which is pretty darn funny. It has one button. Okay, what am I doing with this guy here? Oh, yeah. Uh, so one button, a very, very... T- like, look at the bezel on the Game Child and the size of the Game Child logo. It's huge. <laughs> yeah, we had to custom make a camera for it today because <laughs> the Game Boy camera didn't fit. So, I think yeah, you Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, most people in the chat would be familiar with the game child due to a certain movie by Ashens. Uh, who I, are you familiar with Ashens, John? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So he made an actual movie that's kind of based around that whole. I guess we could say console. The quest <laughs> for the game child. Yeah, he's making a sequel, isn't he? Or he's yeah. Or it's, he made, it's made. It's due out um, next month, I believe. Oh wow. I'm in it three times. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, the first movie was pretty fun, so I, I greatly enjoy Ashen's uh, content. There we go. We got him. That is a trick. All right. Um, so that's that's a couple levels down on, on this game, Trip World. This is not... Pretty good. It's pretty good, but I was really hoping that one of the bosses would be Trip Hawkins, because, you know, around that time, he was pretty big. <laughs> he's, and... the last, he's the last boss. That's right. So you have to unlock him. <laughs> Jet black hair. So it might be difficult to see what I'm doing here. I'll show the chat. Uh, so yeah, I'm playing here on a CRT. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> it's the only way. Uh oh. Now I've messed up my camera. There we go. <laughs> okay. Now we're back. All right. So, uh, so we we've got um. Let's see here. We've got a lot of games in here. What about... You know, there's only one game I care about on the Game Boy. I know. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. All right. And do your favorite. Wait. You don't know what my favorite is. This is not going to be my favorite game. <laughs> no, not again. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. Oh, no. It never stops. Every day. Every day it just happens. <laughs> shows up in my mail, shows up on my door, everywhere. <laughs> Even dinner plates. <laughs> What's chicken today? Yes, I am capturing. No, I'm, I'm not using the Game Boy Player. I'm using the Super Game Boy. So <laughs> that's why the palette's always weird when it starts up. It's like this burnt orange, burnt sienna, as they call it, you know. So I'm actually not going to. I'm not going to play out for chicken. I'm just teasing. We're going we're, we're gonna to find something else. So, What's your story with the, the game, Aldi? He loves it. Oh, no, I do not love it. <laughs> yes, he does. But somehow, it, it has become my life, and uh, I spend my days with a chicken now. I don't know what. So, I, I don't know even know how this freak entered my life. I don't one remember. day it was part. It was part of my life. One day it was like everyone started sending me Alfred Chicken stuff. So how about so, so how which about, is better? Which is better, Bubbly or Alfred Chicken? Oh, stop! Stop teasing me. <laughs> You know the answer to that. Where, where chicken, you? obviously. No. Obviously. All right. What are you saying? What are you saying? So I thought this would be a fun one to pop in briefly. Um, it's Konami because I love Konami. Oh, what's this? Oh, back to five. Yes. Great conversion. Oh. Yeah. Oops. I did not want those colors. <laughs> That's the colors for me. So this. Well, it's actually Probotector 2, but it's which uh, Vili Becca worked word. on. But yeah, the... Probotector is way better in Contra, so we are we are playing the correct version. So this is a conversion of Contra 3: The Alien Wars, or uh, I guess what? Yeah, it's from the Super oh. NES, but to the Game Boy by Factor 5. Yeah, a great yeah. conversion. By the way, before I continue, there's a super chat. Oh, John. cool. It's from Yo Yo Yoshio 267. Is a vacuum cleaner safe to use in the CRT? My cat knocked over a pot plant into my CRT. Oh. 
I don't think it's safe to use if there's soil in it. Uh, I would say you want one of those, like, uh, electronic vacuums. They're a specific type, I'd say. Like, I don't think you want to just use a regular vacuum cleaner inside there. Too many delicate electronics. I wouldn't, anyway. I'd be... Maybe it's... I, no, I don't want to say it's fine, because I really don't think it is. No. Um, yeah, you, you don't want to mess around inside CRTs. Uh, well... You can. They're fun to mess around in. You just, just got to be very careful. Like, I guess that's... Yes. that's I think it's okay to get like a, the right vacuum cleaner for the job and just be very cautious in there. Just don't touch the anode cap anywhere around the anode cap or the flyback transformer. It's that big suction cup thing you'll see on the top. There's a wire running from that to the back. Don't mess with that. Uh, but otherwise, and yeah, a regular vacuum cleaner could potentially cause issues in there, so I wouldn't do that either. Just be careful if you do it. I always loved Probotector more than Contra. Like, unironically, I think the designs of those sort of Path Labor style robots are way better than... What's their name? Bill and Riser? No. So, what's... You're right. It was like... Wait, no, it's Bill... Not Bill and Ted. Uh, <laughs> it's not Bill and Ted. It's Bill Excellent and Lance. Bill and Lance. Course. It's Bill and Lance. So, what's interesting... Yeah, right? yeah. Oh, man, what am I doing? So there's something interesting about this version specifically is like, uh, so we just recently talked with uh, the pixel artist responsible for this version, Andreas, right? Amazing. Yeah, Andreas Escher. Yeah, uh, who's a super nice guy. Uh, but what's interesting here is that he didn't know who, so he did the artwork for this game and is, as Probotector, but he didn't know who did the conversion to Contra. So basically like the human sprites used in the US version uh, he didn't do those. Somebody else did that. So this is technically the original version. You know, Contra 3, of course, you know, Super... That, on the Super NES, that's obviously, you know, with the human characters, that is the original Japanese version. But this, this is the original Factor 5 release. So... So did he do the artwork for the levels as well, then? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, he did the, all the sprite conversion and the art assets, created all of them. So, uh, yeah, Andreas Escher, he did the graphics for Katakis and Turrican as well. And you can, yep. in fact, see quite a bit of Turrican in this game, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, he did a lot of these Game Boy games for Factor 5. He did Animaniacs. He did this one. Uh, he did one called, uh, what was it, Loopy and Philip? Or something yeah, like yeah, something based like on that. A cartoon. And uh, also, he did a lot of the Mega Drive versions for Factor 5, specifically Mega Drive. So uh, right. he's a great sprite artist. Um, kind so of a lost kind of, yeah, isn't it? This is Probotector. Kind of, Probotector yeah, 2. The, the, boss, the boss level. So the boss now coming up um, uses a great use of the window layer on the Game Boy. Oh. To get a giant body sprite coming in. That's cool. Oh, shoot. So I did... there's a uh, super chat here. As an old school gamer who started on a Tandy Color Computer 2, I love for these type of streams, and John is my favorite, one of my favorite people in the gaming yeah. media. I know I'm not alone. Keep up the amazing work. From Crockins 32 FX. Oh, Dang, three, that's, that's really nice. FX. That's really nice of you to say. And also, I like that you have 3D FX in the name. That is, <laughs> is super cool. Okay, so I I failed miserably at this. I, that was terrible. That's okay. We're here to play. Uh, it's time for a game that is much, much more difficult. Much more difficult. But very impressive. You, right. you guys ready for some uh, some Cape Crusader? Sure. Are you ready for another super chat? Yes, let's do it. From Sakamoto Ryuji. How do you all see retro gaming in 30 years plus when replacement parts for old consoles and CRTs become increasingly harder to find and the media cartridges in this space games began to rot away? I actually have not had a single disc rot yet personally. Yeah, I haven't had any disc rot yet, and I think it's just... I, I, I don't know what the situation is with that. Um, but... Uh, let's see here. As I understand it, it's down to, obviously, the media use. Uh, some games are more prone than others. I know laser discs are pretty prone to rot. Oh, let's see here. Let me do something here real quick. Uh, so, yeah, so I mean, his original question, what... Uh, how do you see it in 30 years when replacement parts for these things are gone? Uh, well, I've, 
these days we're seeing so much like uh, hardware and solutions being manufactured. I hope in 30 years that we have something else coming to replace it so we can still right. appreciate it in its original form. So it's hard to say, but so this this is great here. So this is this is one I love, and maybe Quang, you can talk more. So it looks like what they're doing here is they're doing like a scan line kind of trick here, where it's like every other line is updating, sort of wiggling back and forth, but they're also yeah. flashing it on and off. And if you, yeah. Yeah, if, if you pause it, um, solid there, uh, and then here you get the water, right? So they're alternating between this water, uh, I guess, texture thing. And then that, where they're just moving the tiles sort of like by scan line back and forth. And by flickering quickly between the two states, it gives you this impression of like, like sort of like a water trick. And I guess on the slow refresh of the Game Boy, it actually looks kind of transparent. Yeah, it's exactly that. Uh, as we did saw earlier, the water, by flicking between the two of the frames, every, every other frame, you get to see both of them. And using the scan line to update on the H blank, which is every other line, yep. you get to change the, the scroll register and you'll get the wavy lines that way. So it's done really nicely. And that's kind of a, that's kind of the secret to doing, I guess, like parallax scrolling um, on Game Boy games. It's all one layer. You're just like doing you're alternating on the H blank, right? Yeah, exactly that. Which, you do have the window layer, but unfortunately, the window layer isn't transparent and only it's tied to the bottom right. So there are tricks to do it. You can turn it off early and things like that, but uh, it's very difficult to do tricks with the, the window layer. Yeah, I can imagine. Can you think of any games that actually do that? Well, as you said know. earlier, we saw Contra Spirits. Um, we saw Contra, and the boss was oh, yeah, in the yeah, window yeah. layer. So mm -hmm. the background stayed still while the boss came in on the side. And that's because it was on a different layer. Uh oh, oh that's the end of me. <laughs> this is a very hard game. Yeah, you really got to be in the zone to play this one. Someone in the chat is asking about Asuka 120%. Said that I met some of the staff. I did meet most of the staff when I was in Japan working a few years ago, and uh, of course, the composer is uh, Yona Okeshi. So that would be fun to do something on Asuka 120% one day. I agree. I, I know earlier the question was about um, how gaming will be in the next 30 years. Oh yeah. Obviously, yeah. Com companies with like analog are bringing out um, these FPGA consoles to uh, lengthen the life for things. They just announced the PC Engine one, which looks wonderful. It does, yeah. yeah. I'm stoked for that. Yeah, it's it's really tough to say, but I think like, you know, if you're really into this, you'll, you'll find ways to keep original hardware alive. I think obviously yeah. there's gonna be issues with, um, you know, there, okay, why can't I get up? There it goes. <laughs> okay, you, re you have to, yeah, there we go. Uh, I think there's definitely issues with, you know, there's replaceable stuff like capacitors and stuff. And But if, like, the proprietary chips start to fail at some point, you know, that's obviously going to be a real issue. So that's where FPGA yeah. really comes in. And for somebody asking where's Richard, like, Richard is a busy man. And he doesn't, he doesn't have time to stream retro games. Not that I do <laughs> either, but I love doing it, so that's why we're doing it. So, uh... Yeah, I should get him on to talk, to play some Saturn. That's right. Oh man, Use okay. The grappling hook. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't need it yet, but I will. <laughs> yeah, I'm not um, feeling this one right now. This is this is kicking my butt. It's, it's hard to play and watch the chat at the same time. It's really yeah, it is extreme. I feel, I've eliminated the leg problem, so that's good. Um, yes, last week you had quite a bit of lag issue. Now you? that's no problem. Okay, this is actually cool, actually. Uh, let's see here. I think this is the right stage. Now this is the sewers. Wait. Why did it go to the sewers again? Oh, the Gaming Muso says Asobi Tech is awesome. Well, I think the Gaming Muso is pretty awesome, too. I agree. He is very awesome. He yeah, did I tried the to pick best throw the venture arrangement of all time. So... We're making progress through some games. Uh, what can we do? Not Alfred Chicken again. We're done with that. Uh, I'm sure Audi wants more can... Alfred Chicken. Is no, there... you can throw that out the window. It's fine. Is there something you'd like to see, Audi? Actually, here, let's let's do something. This is not a great game that I'm putting in, but it is a game with some oh, very exactly impressive tech. Exactly which one. Yes. I know you I know. know. Exactly which one. I want to see what Quang thinks of this. Maybe you've played it. 
This one is supremely impressive to me. Here we go. Oh uh, yeah, this uh, this is known to break emulators. Yes, for good reason. Some of the tricks, some of the tricks they use in it aren't are replicable unless it's a perfect emulator. Yep, it's prehistoric, man. So this is pretty much like a scene, uh, or you know, it's, this is a demo scene thing in in game intro, form. Yeah. The whole game is this, it's, it's like a this, demo this scene project. It's nice intro, intro right now. The, the scroll for the letters is I don't even know how they do, do this, but it's it's super impressive. Okay, this it's, whole thing feels like an Amiga. It doesn't feel like a Game Boy game. Look at that! They've got overlapping parallax there. So you're doing all those yeah. all those layers using the H blank, but then in front they have the trees, which makes me think is it this could be sprites. But I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um. So I could probably disassemble it in a, in one of the emulators and see the layers and work out what they're doing. But it's it's yeah, it's impressive as hell. Hmm. This is this is very impressive indeed. Uh, let's see here. Let's get started. So look at this. What they do here at the beginning. So they do this. It's like get the stuff, the text on the floor. Like this is yeah. so ridiculously overdone. Like look it's at beautiful. The, this is just absurd. Yeah, it's pretty much just like they were doing on the microcomputers back in the day. Right? Got the cloud layer going. Like but this this is so like over the top and just like Wow. And you can skip this of course. I'm just I'm just showing this uh <laughs> Oh, let's That's see. Game Muso. Oh yeah. So we've got Jim Bagley in the chat in a moment. Jim Bagley is an old school Spectrum programmer. He worked on things like oh, of course. Uh, Cabal in Midnight Resistance. Um, and he, he knows his Game Boy stuff. Oh. He did Game Boy programming as well. Of course. He's a legend. So here we go. So we're in the game here. Uh, it's, oh yeah, they have errors for the enemies. So check, check out the, the, they, console the version, parallax no, scrolling not here. Not that impressive though. Not that much, no. Yeah, but so that's pretty much straightforward. So, how do you think they're doing this, Quang? Like to have an independent uh, background layer like this. So the way I would do it was update tiles, it's themselves. So you will have animated tiles to animate the scrolling. Oh, okay. Interesting. I'm just surprised they're able to, to do it at full speed like that. You can also see that there. It's only one shade. So if it's one shade, you can move a, a single bit plane a lot faster. Uh, you can transfer data quicker that way. Okay. So we have the water moving there. Um, and then the more distant planes. You can see the edge of the tile there, to the, where the transparency should be. But it's just a single yeah. color. This is really... Yeah, so the, the background layer doesn't have actually having transparency. Oh uh, yeah. So you can see that the someone saying that their five dollar uh, five pound donation wasn't acknowledged. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't see. Was it? it? Well, let's uh, yeah. go go find out who did that if you could. That's Andrew Hickenbottom. Uh, Andrew. Oh well, thank you, Andrew. I appreciate that actually. That's that's actually one of the that's one of the the truff uh, the difficult things. Oh yeah. That Quang fellow is a jolly good egg, he says. <laughs> I would agree. I think we first... Andrew's actually... Yeah? Andrew's actually a wonderful 3D artist. He, he works on... I know he worked on a lot of the My Little Pony stuff. Oh, okay. Amazing 3D oh. artist. Awesome. Well, welcome. Thanks for watching, dude. One of the uh, one of the challenges I'm finding with streaming is just like managing the chat plus the game at the same time. It's not easy, is it? You've been doing it lately, huh? Yeah, so we found it's easier with two people, obviously, with one person reading the chat, and it depends on the game. And most games we play, old school games, are fast, quite intense games, and they require full attention. So exactly. I, I think you're doing really well. So 
Yeah, you should talk more about your stream because you started doing one recently. Yeah, so um, yeah. we're now streaming three days a week. Uh, we do uh, Tuesday, which is Gaming Club, where we show a retro console for my collection. I have over 230 box consoles. I take one of them, we show it, we play on it, and uh, we discuss it. We also do some community gaming. And then on Wednesday, we do uh, live coding. We do coding club. And currently, I'm doing game recording. So <laughs> if you want to drop by on Wednesday, you can see me do game recording. And then Thursday, we do movie club where we watch and then we discuss a movie. That's awesome. I need to check that yeah, out. We haven't even mentioned your uh, console collection yet. I mean, this is what you're <laughs> most known for, right? It's just your insane uh, You got a lot, yeah. Which we've seen. The first time. Yeah, we went to your place for the first time last year together yeah. during, uh, what was the event? EGX? EGX, yeah. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And uh, I got terribly sick, but uh, I loved every minute still of my time there. And oh, it was great. Things. It was great to have you there and watch you play uh, Sorcerer's Vulcan, and that was amazing. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, I did speedrun that. I'll do that on stream one day. So, I'll play through it. Uh, so, I should. Super Famicom TV. We switch games here. I just should mention that this is the second mm -hmm. Tiny Toon Adventures game. Uh, I love both of these games. I had them back in the day. Konami always does such great platformers and they really did a great job with these licensed games like the tiny twos games that konami produced i think most of them are excellent mm -hmm. there's two game boy ones an nes agree, game yeah. super nes and genesis mega drive which that one didn't get that's weird the japanese mega drive uh did not get a version of tiny tunes which is a shame um, that's a good game yeah the other ones did though but yeah, yeah famicom did. Yep. famicom super famicom did game boy and super famicom all did oh, i wow. guess the, the mega drive was very much a game center arcades style gaming console in japan so yeah you'll have to you'll have to send me your link to where you stream quang so that when you do go stream i'll uh, retweet and everything get the word out sure. there no problem, thank you. Maybe the next game we'll play, though. We should actually play your game. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to say no to that. <laughs> so the the story behind it, it's, it's, it's a long-winded story, but it's kind of a, a, a circle I need to close, um, and by making it and releasing it, I close this circle. Excellent. Oh, man. Yeah, I look forward to seeing it. Have you sold out your pre-order on your game yet? Uh, so we're taking pre-orders now at the moment. Tomorrow is the last day you can pre-order the game. Uh, we're using the pre-orders to know how many cartridges we need to make. So once this oh, pre-order is done, we're not making it anymore. So um, yeah, so we're not sold out. We just need to know how many we need to make. I need to put in an order then. Oh, okay. I need one too. Yeah, cause you're doing so the you're doing the full thing, aren't you? You're doing full package yeah. cartridge, like it's all complete. And the game mm -hmm. also supports both Game Boy Color and oh, whoops, uh, and uh, the DMG. Indeed, yeah. Uh, I felt that was quite important. Um, so the game was originally conceived back in 1999 as a port to Jetpack, the old game by the Ultimate Play the Game, and um, I made oh, sure it cool. worked on G DMG and on Color. Mm, as, a, an as a learning experience and that's kind of tricky uh, because like with the way the palettes work on the dmg like getting it to look right while creating art for the game boy color it seems like quite a trick yeah for sure so we've got some a uh, couple of really great artists that worked on it my brother himself uh, v pixels he's in the chat i think he's as a beepster and then we have also uh, zombie workshop they've both done some amazing work to bring the, the graphics wow. to life in black and white and in color Excellent. Well, we'll get we'll get to that in a moment, of course. I will say I noticed that Jim Bagley he actually just posted in the chat there that he had worked on the Tiny Toons Buster Saves the Day for Game Boy Color, which is amazing. Interesting. I did not know that. That's really cool. Man, Jim, you've uh, you've had your hands in so many games. It's quite a, quite an impressive career. Oh man. This one. This is this is a very tough game though, right here. Uh, Especially once you get to the the future stage, there's this part where it's almost like a Battletoad style bike. I'm doing terrible with the collision there. Battletoad style bike with these like blind jumps, because this game kind of highlights one of the big issues with 
Game Boy games that developers often ran into is, you know, obviously you see Buster's sprite is huge. It looks great. It's really, really detailed, but he takes up a huge portion of the screen. So it kind of limits how much of the screen you can see, which can make platforming a little bit tricky. But if you go too small, you lose the detail. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. But what I love about this stage, though, is they're, they're doing the, the H-blank trick to do, get the nice... So you get the mountains up there, parallaxing separate from the ground that's moving constantly uh, with this sort of train system going on. It looks looks cool, I think. It's quite a nice, neat trick you saw earlier. He went in behind the, the, the carriage, behind the max sign. Um, and this is quite difficult to do because... Uh, you have to turn the priority of the sprite on and off. So, like, and it has to come this kind, this kind of section right. right here? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's interesting, yeah. and it, this It's little, easier whoa. on Game Boy Color, because Game Boy Color has individual priority on each tile for the background, whereas the um, game, old DMG only has it for the full background layer, or the full, full sprite oh, layer. Oh, okay. Wow, okay, so that's an even more impressive trick than I thought. Oh, and I just yeah. hap happened to be looking at the screen to see, hello guys, just here to say that I love DF Retro, thank you, and wanted to thank you guys and Audi for bringing back Turrican. I can't wait. <laughs> I am also it's happy a, about that. quite a surreal moment in my life that we are now working on Turrican officially, as uh, I grew up with that game, and yes, uh, I get very emotional thinking about it. Let's see. If I'm reading this, does John own Avenging Spirit? I do not. Do you own no. that? It's a pretty I good don't, game. I it, don't have Avenging Spirit. I get, like the get US injured. <laughs> yeah. I don't have Avenging Spirit. Huh. Okay, so here he comes. Woo. Jump on him. Orion's Angel, um, he's, they're actually playing on an original Game Boy, Super Game Boy 2. So they're not using any shaders for this. It's an actual real hardware yes. they're playing on. We were actually thinking of using RetroArch with the shader, um, but yeah, exactly. John likes it. You know, I, I agree. Like, it's <laughs> nice to have it on the actual console, just kind of making sure it's running proper. Uh, but the, the RetroArch shader for the dot matrix effect is amazing. I agree. I mean, that that definitely looks better than this. And uh, I'm always been a stickler for the dot matrix style. Like I think a lot of graphical effects get lost in on uh, the Super Game Boy. Not many, but like it can happen. And uh, so I like seeing the original dot matrix green screen. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I, I do tend to agree. Uh, let's see here. There's obviously been a big rash of recently of uh, new Game Boy screen upgrades. So backlit yes, LCD screens. Exactly. And. There's now one by Funny Playing, which has the dot matrix grid built into it. Um, yes, I want. Great. I, I want to get that one. Which ver is that? Like ver is that a third version? Version or? three, yeah. Version three rips, I believe. Okay, that's the one I need to get. Uh, I'll talk to you later. I'll hook you up. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Someone asked if we had tried Cave Noir. Yes, I have. It's a pretty oh, yeah. cool RPG. It has a translation patch now, I think. But uh, yeah, I like that. It's simplistic but cool so come on plucky. game boy is kind of one i think game boy is one of the systems you and i kind of gravitate most towards when i come over for sleepovers <laughs> <laughs> yeah the game boy it really it holds a special place in my heart i think it's such an interesting Same. machine i think I for mean, for everyone it, it the game boy has such a universal appeal for a lot of people it's one of those consoles consoles that has uh, it's instantly recognizable, and everybody has some sort of Game Boy uh, connection, I believe. That's right, yeah. Exactly. Oh, so there's a super chat from Binyavik. Okay. Uh, nice to see you doing better, John. Did you ever play uh, Scramble Valkyrie Mock Ross on Super Famicom? Best shmup on the platform. It is very good. Oh, man. I love Scramble I don't... Valkyrie. That's actually one I have not played. It sounds like one oh, I need to play. I'll bring my cartridge next time. Excellent. Someone's it's asking if we're going to do a DF Retro on Asterix. Yes, one day we will. I'm just answering that for you. <laughs> <laughs> Super Turrican has some of the best music ever done in SNES, in my opinion. Yes, yes. I agree. <laughs> I would agree 100%. But Mega Turrican yeah, is Mega Turrican is incredible. That's where it's at. I actually think... Me well, right into the water. I think Mega Turrican's <laughs> possibly 
either like one of or if not the best sounding western developed game on the Mega Drive. If not the very best. I mean, like, it's really good sounding. Yeah, what's the soundtrack? Be the... Chris Holzbeck. Yeah, Holzbeck. Yeah, Chris, that. Nice. Yeah. No, I would I would say in recent times if you put like Xeno Crisis in there that uh <laughs> that sounds sound, amazing. That's unbelievable sounding. But that's, you know, that's the modern era. Not not to take anything away from it, but, you know, a lot of tools have evolved and new techniques developed. And I'm not sure we would have heard anything quite like that back in the day. Who knows, though? I'm sure it could have been done, but... Yeah. yeah. Well, what Probably not. Those on that, it, it, then the music would have been great, but the game would have been terrible. If it had been done back then. Because <laughs> that would be all their efforts. Okay, so let's. What, what's people asking for here? Um, I see at least a couple people calling for Wario Land, and I'm kind of feeling like maybe that's a good idea. You no, guys like Wario I was Land, say right? Metroid too. Okay, well they're they're both an yeah, option, of course. And then maybe some uh... Metroid Two is actually my favorite Metroid. Really? That's controversial. But I like I to know. hear. Uh... <laughs> I think it, I like it more linear, and I like... We were talking about Game Boy. Everyone has a Game Boy kind of moment. I think what's so great about Game Boy is the pick-up-and-play aspect. The fact that, like, anything is instantly accessible. And uh, Metroid 2 was kind of... I didn't quite get Metroid 1 when it first came out. But then when I played Metroid 2, I kind of got it. And oh. it made my enjoyment of the other games so much better. So... Gravito and Trip World. I just I already played it, man. That was uh, we played it earlier in the stream. If you go back and check it out, you can. Uh, and somebody else asked, Universal "Does the Game Soldier. Boy does the Game Boy use traditional sprites?" Yes, it it has the sprite yes. and tile system, just like other machines from that era. So the thing about the Game Boy sprites is there's forty hardware sprites. They're eight by eight pixels each, or there's an eight by sixteen mode, uh, which is also used. But the big biggest problem you have is you can only have ten sprites in a scan line. Yeah. Otherwise, they start flickering. Exactly. So you get a flicker a lot. <sighs> so talking a bit more about Game Boy, um, a couple of years ago I had dinner with uh, Hip Tanaka, who's mostly known for doing Super Mario Land soundtrack and Mother and all these great games. But he was very involved with the sound hardware for the Game Boy and eventually the Virtual Boy. And uh, when we talked about the Game Boy, he was very adamant to kind of, for the sound hardware on Game Boy, he really wanted to make up for some of the limitations he saw on the NES, which I thought was kind of an interesting thing. I mean, it has one less channel, is it? Of sound? It's the same number of channels. But it's is it the not same number? Is oh, it? you mean the Famicom? No, so, Famicom, yeah, because yeah. the Game Boy has, yeah. Sorry, I was thinking the other way around when you said that. Yeah, because the Famicom uh, is obviously mono, whereas yeah. the Game Boy is stereo, and I think that was one yeah. of the things that he was really adamant needed to be in there. Yeah. Uh, but he had a lot of love for the Game Boy, and he was very proud of his work on it. So it was interesting to hear him, because I always thought of him as a composer, well, you know, but uh, to hear him talk about the hardware so much, it was uh, pretty interesting. That is he cool. Was, uh, Lots of vivid memories of it, and uh, but he did tell me that he always felt the Virtual Boy was uh, his kind of pride and joy, and he wished that the Virtual Boy could have been heard more because mm. it had so many great things that wasn't utilized on the sound hardware. So I can imagine. Maybe some uh, artists can make use of like a Virtual Boy tracker or something. That would be some cool. Great Virtual Boy music. Speaking of good music, though, I I love the music in uh, Super Mario Land Three Wario Land. This All is, of those games have great soundtracks. Yeah. Also, so Wario Land is, an, is another one where it's one of the first games that I remember uh, going out with my own money and buying on day one. You know, like usually I'd gotten games like after they had already been released, but this was one that I was watching very carefully for. Uh, and the day it arrived at the store, I was out there picking up a copy. I loved it because I was really into the Game Boy. Do you know which game I bought with my money for the first time? I don't. The Last Action Hero on Super Nintendo. Oh. It wasn't Alpha Chicken. 
No, I never bought. I don't. I don't want Alfred Chicken. <laughs> you you definitely have purchased Alfred Chicken though. You have a lot. I have. Of uh, yes, uh, to uh, to admit it. I mean, once people started sending me stuff, I had to uh, finish the collection. So I think I have all of them now, except the oh, Japanese wait. variant. Somebody's asking us to do our best. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo 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 shiro two six seven. Oh man, I love it. Uh, it's, it's interesting to see the progression of the Super Mario Land games from the first Super Mario Land, the tiny little Mario, to obviously six, six golden coins, and then to this, and just how much better be they became. Yeah, yeah, and the first one, I guess they were trying to maintain the proportions of the NES game yeah. uh, with very low detail, tiny sprites, and it kind of worked. The second one was clearly modeled after Super Mario World in terms of aesthetic, mm. but with its own weird world design. One thing I always wondered about, and maybe you have a good answer to this, is um, in that game specifically, they updated all enemy sprites uh, like at half rate. So, like every other frame they would move. Which was something I always assumed was just like a, a you know save on performance there. But yeah, I, I would probably agree on that. Um, I think one of the games I was working on uh, it would have been Revolt conversion for Game Boy, which got cancelled in the end. But we were doing every, every other frame because there's only so much processing power you have. It's a basically a one megahertz processor. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. And it was interesting <laughs> so because they, they kept the overall game still runs at a full 60-ish frames per second, you know, the rate of the yeah. screen. But certain things are updated at half rate. And I always thought that was an interesting compromise where you could still get smooth scrolling and mostly smooth motion. But on a few things like en enemies, for instance, you just, you know, you could update them at half rate to improve things. Oh, thank you, David. Yeah. I just I just peeked over and David Cohen said, John, you are awesome. I appreciate <laughs> that, especially after this week. It's I been, think we all agree. This has been a rough... Covering these new consoles, man. Whew. I've had I've yeah, had uh, busy week. I've had fans of both uh, coming after me this week for different <laughs> reasons. So I'm just like, yeah. Luckily, we're all fans of Game Boy together, so we don't need exactly. to worry about that. Exactly. I love so, the Game Boy. Yeah. I love the Game Boy. I love the Game Boy. It's wonderful. Um, uh, it's definitely my, in my top three. Um, I would probably say it's my favorite console of all time, the Game Boy. It's... Wow, out of your 155 consoles, you think this is your favorite? 230, <laughs> but yes. 230, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I lowballed it. This, this is... So, all right, all right. This versus Game Child. Oh. <laughs> I mean, Why the Game Child's fine both? in... This, the game Child's fine in small doses, but it doesn't have the lasting <laughs> power of the Game Boy. You heard it here first, folks. The Game <laughs> Child does not have the lasting power of the Game Boy. Uh, we have Simon keep going on about the Game Boy Light, and I have to as I chime, chime in there because the Game Boy Light for me is one of my favorite Game Boys. I have oh, yeah, a complete I collection it. of Game Boy Lights, and the the um, Tezuka a limited edition from Astro Boy one is beautiful. The uh, Pikachu one is wonderful, and the wonderful Famitsu 500 anniversary one with the artwork from Rocking Jelly Bean that's incredible. Oh, and you man. have all of these, don't you? I do indeed. I only have the gold uh, Game Boy Light, <laughs> which looks. Is your gold it's, it's still um, in good condition? I know the, the, the paint wears off. Yeah, no, it's all the paint's still on. It looks pretty good. It's uh, it's okay. You're right there. That that, that is an interesting problem with some old con. It's also a problem with the Lynx one. It's yeah, like the whole rubber, yeah. the the paint stuff, rubber stuff, whatever it is, like just comes off, yeah. and it looks awful when it does. Yeah, um, the Gizmondo as well. Mm. Oh, that's a <laughs> oh, that's a nasty one. That that gets bad <laughs> it, with age. It's like because it, it's like that soft touch stuff, but yeah, it gets all like gunky. Yeah, it's terrible. Oof. Yeah, the Game Boy Light though is very cool. Uh, I'm a big fan of that one. It's such a shame we didn't come over here. It it, it was too close to the Game Boy Color being released, and um, it just didn't make much sense. Yeah, I I I get it. I can see why they wouldn't have brought that out, but still, it's so good. I, I love it. <laughs> what do you think Ooh. is the best competitor, though? Like of of the ones that came out, like Lynx and Game Gear and such. Which one is your favorite of the competitors? All right, Boy? so <laughs> technically, I would say the Game Gear. I like the Game Gear a lot. 
But if I, if I'm if I'm gonna cheat, I would say uh, the the Turbo Express. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> Yeah, can I can I bend the rules to allow that? Because I could technically say the portable CDI is my favorite. Okay, well, but yeah, yeah, I, Game Gear I like a lot. I, I'm a big fan of the Game Gear. Um, I I do prefer the Game Boy overall, though, and I actually think that the Game Game Boy games in general kind of held up better than most of the other handhelds from back then. Yeah, yeah. like you look at the what what's that? I think the closest you get to like Game Boy quality games would be like. Wonder Swan, maybe Neo Geo Pocket. Yeah, the Neo Geo Pocket. I was just about to say that's definitely up there. For one of my favorite handhelds. It doesn't have the variety though. I mean, there's not no. as many no. types of games. It has a good Sonic not, game though. Just not many games. Full yeah. stop. <laughs> yeah, not too many games. Yeah, that's true. So. Oh, I love I love the uh, the tiles in this room. Where it's just like this like dark cave environment, and you. They sort of design the background tiles to look as if it's like connecting the pieces together, and it's just, it's it's nice. I, I really like the art in this game. Yeah, so I, I don't know if you, people know, but for a tile-based game, you have to use your tiles very carefully because you don't have so much memory to use. That's right. Yeah. Um, and the more elements you have, more unique elements you have, the less tiles you're gonna be have to use. Which I assume is why it makes it so difficult to do like full-screen graphics. Where it's like a huge mm. picture that fills the screen, uh, you have to be very careful with your tile choice, I guess, to make that work. Otherwise, um, so if you actually, so the Game Boy has two hundred fifty-six unique tiles or backgrounds, and to fill a whole screen, I'm gonna say off the top of my head, I think it's three hundred eighty-four tiles to fill a whole screen. Mm. So you don't actually have enough tiles to do it. Ah, uh, yeah, that's that's what. It, so you couldn't actually do a full screen full of unique tiles. No, um, th there are tricks to do it, but it's not like not easily done. So you mentioned uh, Quang that you worked on Super Jetpack back then. Mm. It was ninety nine. You said yes. Revolt, which was also canceled. Can yeah. You, like, how many Game Boy games did you work on, canceled or and released? <laughs> um, so, so Jetpack was a homebrew game I made as a hobby, it's, and it's the first game I how I learned how to program for the Game Boy, mm. and that got me a job making Game Boy games. I was hired for Revolt, um, and we did, I think, about six months of that before that was cancelled, which was ridiculous because it was really close to being finished. Oh, man. Um, and then we got the contracts for um, Equestria 2001, a horse riding game, mm -hmm. and Mary King Riding Star, which is uh, looking after your horse. Um, and then <laughs> finally we got the contract for Lego Stunt Rally, which is cool. a racing game with Lego pieces, which was great. That's that excellent. was a pretty good game, wasn't it, on Game Boy? Uh, on Game Boy, it's terrible, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, was it? Uh, it started yeah. off as a great game when I was making it, but they they dumbed it down a lot, so the, the racing <laughs> isn't fun. Uh, they made it very, very simple. If you play it on the PlayStation or the PC, it's a great game, mm -hmm. but the Game Boy version was dumbed down far too much, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, man. My favorite part of that is the level creation tool I, I wrote for that. And you can oh. build your Lego track together. And, and I think at the time, that was the only Game Boy game that was doing it. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, so what made you decide to come back then with uh, Super Jetpack? So Super Jetpack DX is the game, obviously, that I first made. Um, and it was just out there on the internet as a ROM. And the games I made for the company, um, yeah. I actually only was only there a year, and I left the company before those games were finished. So none of my ne none of the, the games have my name in them, and mm -hmm. I kind of want my to release a game with my name in the credits. So this is why we oh, went back to yeah. Super Chat. That's awesome. That's the Super Chat saying from Gerald Camposano. Hi guys, always love seeing new DF retro content. Oh, thank you. That's like. See, I love I love hearing that because that's I said it before. That's like my favorite stuff to make. But yeah, it's um, yeah, man. I'm always happy when you invite me to work on them. So yeah, it's great you to make it some, happen some again. Help. Yeah, Corin are... was asking is if there's a was didn't know there was a portable CDI. As far as I know, there's ones by Sony uh, and other companies as well. I make them. Whoops. Yeah, there, there's so much CDI hardware out there. It's oh, absurd. God, yes. yes. Do you have every CDI unit ever made, Quang? 
No, so I've decided to be quite choosy with that and choose the ones that are designed for gaming. So I have the 450 and the TV, the Bangalore Office and TV at the moment. Oh, let's... <laughs> yeah, it's a TV. I'm on a search for that TV. It's it, for those who don't know that there is a Bang & Olufsen TV unit with a built-in CDI where the top has a CD tray on it and you can collect, connect your controller to it. So and it's yeah. pretty good the CRT as well. It's pretty so good size screen. and quality. It has yeah. the motorized base so it turns around when it turns on, the speakers come out automatically. It has great sound and great picture. Motorized it's it's wonderful. So Oh, yeah, man. I gotta get myself one of those. Oh, maybe some shmup action, Gra Gradius Nemesis Twinbee. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think we'll do that. Do you have uh, Sagaya? I don't. Uh, I do have a uh, Nemesis one or two or one of these here. Someone's asking or saying, real talk, Mr. could do CDI, right? If anyone cared to write the core, I agree. Who, why haven't they made a core for the Mr.? Actually, Everyone always, every time I post anything on Twitter or anything about retro games, there's always someone saying, you can play it on, you know, the Mr. Well, you can't play the CDI on Mr. So, you cannot. if you can't play the CDI on Mr., I'll buy one. I'll build one myself. So... You see what time oh, it is. Let me get the Game Boy set up. So I got, for this one, I actually popped in the, the EverDrive because it's the only way to play this for me Currently, right now. Currently, yes. So we're going to play Super Jetpack DX. So we're playing Quang's game here. So we, let's let's do this. All right. Oh, well, that's nice. So <laughs> you, must, it for you. you just updated that today. That's pretty cool. Oh, and then Monfred Lisner, love love his stuff. Yeah. All right, so maybe I'll start with. So this is difficulty so selection. Yeah, so you have difficulty levels. You have three, three. Uh, so in fun mode, it's two enemies. Your your laser weapon doesn't drain, uh, and then on the next two, uh, your laser weapon does drain, but there's then three, and then there's four enemies. It gets very very tough because it's a cramped screen. Okay. Also, I see it seems to update. Oh, that's a cool uh, fog effect at the bottom there. I like that. So, yeah, that's, that's H-blank. So you're doing lots of... Yeah, that's cool. So if you go up to the top of the screen, you'll see another trick. Oh, uh, wait, is that the window and you're, like, raising it? No. Somehow? That's not... That's the background, that's the background layer. Oh. It's <laughs> actually below... It's actually drawn below the whole screen. And I mess with the V-blank... Uh, and positioning to get it up to the top and then switch back quickly. Okay, so there's a that super is chat super quickly. cool. Yes. Uh, first in streak says, thank you for all the content. Congrats on reaching 1 million subs. Long overdue. What is the crown jewel of your gaming collections? Oh, man. Um, <sighs> that's really hard. Um, probably something on Mega Drive. Yeah, so for release stuff, I would say probably Gimmick on Famicom. Complete in Box is one of them. But I also have a lot of PC-98 stuff from original developers that's never been released. And I guess that's kind of Crown Jewel stuff. But no one's ever played it, so I can't really say that. But uh, it's fun to have Ooh. just for archiving. I'll post... One day I'll archive all Whoa, what my PC-98 stuff. Oh, there's a, it reverses your controls. Yeah, confusion, yeah. Oh, man, okay. What about you? Uh, it's brutally Quang. hard. Quang, what's your crown jewel of your console collection? The game child. Um, it's prob the game probably going to be the game child. <laughs> <laughs> the game child, okay. <laughs> uh, I would probably go with the um, Dreamcast TV. The divers, oh, the, the Divers Dive. Dreamcast. Oh, we, we played on that. Yeah, that thing's ridiculous. Yeah, it was pretty fun, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, what what it's, made it's you... It's a machine. What made you collect consoles specifically? I'm sure you told people this story before, but for our audience, just what was yeah. it that kind of made you the console master? Um, I, just one of those things. Obviously, you you got the consoles you have, and I usually kept everything I could keep. And then after amassing four or five consoles, people were like oh, you have a lot of consoles because I, I never sold them on. I just kept them, 
Um, and then you start collecting all the ones you remembered as a kid and the ones you wanted to have because now you have you become an adult and you have some income you can buy things now and oh, yeah. then as the collection grew people noticed it got bigger and bigger and people oh my i don't God. know it, it, there's that ment i guess that hoarder mentality when you want to own everything and have a complete set and that's kind of where i, I got <sighs> to okay i'm terrible at this dude okay <laughs> it's like a, it's brutally hard <laughs> So you said you this you approached rare right or what was no. ultimate back in the day? So the, what was ultimate? So this is just a, a homebrew that um, it's a fan game, I guess you would call it. Oh, Obviously, so you never, this never talk, you never talked to them? No, I, I didn't have a chance to. Um, I was a young child, <laughs> and I didn't know. You could uh, almost say you games. were a game child. <laughs> you were a game child in your bedroom. Yeah. Well, bedroom coders, I mean, that's what the Brits are known for in the gaming world, right? That's true. So you just follow tradition. For sure. It's um, just like we were lucky enough that um, the community released tools to make game, game of games because mm -hmm. to buy a development kit, you're talking thousands of pounds. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. That would have been ridiculous. So... When, when the community released a development kit for it, um, it, it was just great and opened up this whole homebrew scene of, of wonderful games. So, this is pretty darn cool, I must say. I like this a lot. It's hard, Thank you. but it's a really cool version of Jetpack. Yeah, so, you know, we called it Super because we've added a bunch of new things to it, a bunch of new weapons, the different levels, the different enemy types and things. Uh, you have a shield right there. Um, uh, and yeah, it's just it's trying to expand it. I'm, I'm going to look at trying to add a Super Game Boy border to it, but that's not the easiest thing to do. And hopefully I have enough time to do it before the release comes out. I mean, that pretty much gets into Super NES coding at that point. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, you have to send packets of data over to the Super Game Boy uh, and then get it to oh my get gosh. code that way. I'm so, as they say, rubbish at this. But it's addictive. So you said... So you said you can order this for one more day physically. Where can they order it? Yeah, so if you head over to pocketpixel.design, um, that's a shop that I run uh, selling retro t-shirts. I'm wearing one of the t-shirts now. I know uh, John has oh, some yeah. of the t-shirts. I've used them on stream before, or on video. Yeah. They're pretty cool. I um, like so them. Th thank you so much. Um, that's where. So that's where we can buy the game, pocketpixel.design. Uh, it's £40 for the full box with manual we've got zombie workshop doing the the artwork for that we've got trista bites doing the manual um and i'm putting the carts together and the labeling for that um Oof. and then it's 25 pounds for just the cart for those who just want to collect carts and play the game and we're also doing just a rom as well for 10 pounds but every single rom is in every single tier the rom is included and i'm going to customize every single rom as you see with the beginning of this as it says thank you to the person who purchased it so I'm gonna take time to do that for them. Oof. I see. That's pretty cool. That is cool. So one thing I see is um so somebody did ask about seeing it on color, and yeah, it definitely supports Game Boy Color, but due to the way the stream is set up, I'm using just the Super Game Boy right now, so uh not really in a position to do that. <laughs> I can't I can't spoil everything. If you pick it up a copy, you can check it out on your Game Boy Color. But actually, the I, I must say the the palette choices here are pretty good for black and white DMG here. Yeah, looks good. It actually, kind yeah. of reminds me of Metroid, <laughs> too, in some ways, because that same yeah, kind of like space, yeah, the space background and the terrain and everything. But I love this. That trick at the top is so cool. Thank you. Yeah, we wanted to add a few extra things in it. So, I said the mist uh, ha has, I think, four layers of parallax in the mist, and and the top part where it moves up and down to get out of the way for you. Um, it's a nice little trick. It's so cool. Um, so that that when you scroll over the screen between stages, hmm. what what are you That'll doing the there? Is that the window? So that's the window layer. Yeah, exactly. That's the window layer, okay, yeah. the window, layer, window, okay, window yeah. layer in, and it wipes it. So as it goes over, and then we redraw the background to the different, the next stage, and then bring it back off. off. Um, and that's one way of using the window layer. That's cool. Oh, 
uh, Andrew's asking what's the electricity gun meter do. So on the medium and the hard hard level, uh, you, your gun basically runs out of energy. If you hold the fire button down, it's auto, auto fire, but it will run out and you have to let go of it for, to, to, for it to recharge. Hmm. Well, yeah, I was playing on uh, normal before, now I switched it. And now, oh yeah, you can just fire infinitely. That's cool. Yeah. Cool, Jim. Uh, I'll hit up, hit you up later on, and we we'll talk about uh, doing the border for the Super Nintendo. Oh, cool. Yeah, that would be fun if you could get that done. Oh yeah, that would be such a cool thing to add. I always liked those borders. I always liked when the Super Game Boy was used differently. Even like if you play Space Invaders. Mm. Oh, it's a Super uh, NES game. game. Yeah, just straight up Super NES game. I think some games even use the sound hardware. On yeah, Super like Don Donkey Kong ninety four does that. Yeah, which is super cool. There's also a few games like some of the beat 'em ups that use the two controllers. So you can play two players on, on yeah, the same. That's right. That's right. Yeah, this game is really cool, Quang. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean it's, um, it's jetpack, but with a cool new visual style, and without color yeah. clash. And we have new uh, level designs as well, um, and yeah, just a complete new look at the weapons as well, which is cool. So I'm guessing you played this a lot on the Spectrum then back in the day, or did you play it on another system? Yeah, so Spectrum. It's actually the first Spectrum game I ever played. Oh, and okay. I fell in love. With, I fell in love with the Spectrum because of it. It. Somebody says that looks like the Jetpack game Rare made, and that yes, <laughs> very close. <laughs> that is well, not it's quite. My, this is better. It's my, hom it's my homage. Yeah. Homage to it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, oh man, these things are cool. So that level you're on now is probably my uh, least favorite level to play because it's it's just brutally difficult, those tunnels. Yeah, you get trapped in there easily. Yeah. I think uh, my favorite power-up is the little drone guy that spins around you. <laughs> so if you can get hold of the drone, he's always good to get hold of. Do you have any plans to continue doing Game Boy uh software or is this kind of where yeah, you go out I, yeah i think so um so uh, i was um working in it as my day job in different games in my spare time you got I, we, we get met showing uh, when i showed uh, mau mau castle my game but flying cat dragon oh yeah um, right but um i took a little detour when i was made redundant um to make a game of game just to reinvigorate that and i think i really want to make game of games because it's so much fun to do and, and and it's just a wonderful piece of hardware um the limitations really make it fun to, to make games for so I, I think yeah if it's financially viable then for sure i'll be making game of games for, for the foreseeable future have you kept up with the re because nowadays like there's a lot of these homebrew rpg games for the game boy because mm. i think there's an open source kind of engine yeah, that was released gp studio yeah yeah so i know that there's a lot of rpgs coming out some of them look quite good on the game boy but uh, yeah it's interesting yeah. to see how these systems are coming back uh, with all these new games yeah, and re-releases also still a market for these the aftermarkets uh, i think i mentioned a few times before in our videos and stuff but one of my favorite things to collect these days is homebrew games and aftermarket games on cartridge so yeah. I think that's really cool that you're doing this, especially with the full box and manual and everything. Yeah, it's, it's one of the things where there's enough of a passionate audience that people want these sort of things. Uh, obviously, we talked about Xena Crisis earlier mm. uh, and talked about GB Studio coming out. Um, GB oh, Studio yeah. 2 is coming out along with the Analog Pocket. And oh, they're yeah, going nice. to give uh, you options to make more variety type of games, so platformers and shoot 'em ups as well. So we're going to see much more games coming out from Juby Studio come soon. Mm. Yeah, it's really cool. Just keep on making mm. these games. Would you ever make a Mao Mao game for Game Boy? That'd I would love cool. to. That'd be awesome. Uh, I'm not sure how I would do it because it's quite a complex game in terms of, like, if you think of trying to put Space Harry on a Game Boy, yeah, it wouldn't exactly. be so easy. But they put Space Harry on like the PC, um, was it 01? Like, some of the early NEC PCs have Ports yeah, of the there was one on FM7, right, or something like mm, that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, of course, you can look at Space Harrier or other copycats on Famicom. Mm. So, 
Yeah. All right. There's yeah. ways of getting around that limitation, I'm sure. Shall we move on, gentlemen? Sure. That was a, sure. Thank it's you. a very cool game, dude. I'm liking that a lot. So maybe we should mention one more time where people can get it before we move on. Sure, yeah. You can pick up Super Jetpack DX uh, physical copy at pocketpixel.design. That's the website, pocketpixel.design. So I'll see if I can get the uh, Pocket Pixel. Let's do a little, um, hmm, I have an idea. Terranus Text was another GBFPS. Yes, it's a shame Terranus TX Text didn't come out. Um, I know they leaked the ROM, an early build of the game. It looked like it was going to be amazing. It's just a shame they didn't get it finished. Oh. Right, here we go. Lou's asking me why stopping from using games on Steam if you wanted to uh, emulate license. Um, I, th I think mainly because it's a different platform. In terms mm -hmm. and releasing Game Boy games on Steam, I don't feel it's the correct audience. No, uh, I, I agree. I, I don't. I don't see how people would appreciate it too much on Steam. There. Yeah. No, I think the ROM file is enough for those who want to play it on PC. Yeah. And you get the ROM file when you buy the game. So. Yeah, and with your name in it as well. <laughs> yeah, with your name in it. So which Mega Man is this? This is uh, 3. So back in the day I had 1, 2, and 3, and then I later got 4 and 5. And 5 is super cool because it's completely original. But actually all of these Game Boy games are original. So obviously this is based on Mega Man 3 uh, and 4. Oh man, the snake is always... But it has original level designs. It's, it's quite different. That's why I've always liked these Rockman World games. They redesigned everything. I think it was Minakuchi Engineering that did it. Yeah. And they also did uh, the Mega Drive game. Rockman Wild World. Wars. Yeah. yeah, Rockman Mega World. Yeah. Obviously, due to again to the due to the screen size of the Game Boy being 160 by 144, uh, you have to design the levels to fit that screen size. Exactly, and it works. Well. Yes and no. Like, if you look at what U.S. Gold tried to do with the Game Gear Mega Man, uh, oh. they, just, they just scroll it in all directions. So you get, but everything's zoomed in, and it does not play yeah. well. Yeah, I actually wanted yeah. to pick Mega Man Five, but um, it's not in my stack here. I have it. It's it's. So, oh wait, actually, it is. It's. I have the box. <laughs> I have the box here. I just didn't take it out yet. Yeah, I have. I have that one. Uh, the, the Japanese cool. one and that one. I have all the Mega yeah. Mega Man ones in box though for the Game Boy because I I'm a big fan of those. Five is really cool though. I agree. I Whoops. really like uh, the Rush Jet Arrange albums that uh, was released on Bandcamp, where he kind of even makes it more Mega Man than the original oh, yeah. soundtracks. So if you're a fan of these soundtracks, check out Rush Jet ones. Yeah, there's um, there's there's a patch someone released for the first two Mega Man games because the the pitch of the music is a little, little too high for two, if I remember right. correctly. Yeah. So they, they patched it so the, the the it's more in line with the NES original, which is quite interesting. Well, you say NES original, but Meg, Me, so Mega Man Two in the Game Boy has a completely original soundtrack, and it's really good. It's just that the, mm. it's pitched too high, and that's what they fixed. Yeah. But it has not, you know, it's completely different songs than what's on NES. Chill. They're good, like really good, surprisingly so. Yeah. But yeah, the pitch I, stuff. I actually Whoa. played the Mega Man soundtrack when I'm working because it's a good energy <laughs> to keep me it working. Is, yeah. This and uh, ba the original Batman or Game Boy, it's a great soundtrack. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's a great soundtrack. So yeah, they they probably couldn't have done much better here. I guess you can see on the corners, uh, the ladder itself. It's the the negative color is black or you know it's dark mm -hmm. and then the edges of this snake blocks like they tried <laughs> to use a color to blend the sky but because it uh, I guess the shade the shade on the top blocks is close to the sky color but the bottom one is a darker shade so I guess that's just yeah. they couldn't hmm, couldn't have used like a transparent uh, like what, there are no transparencies that's right there's no transparent 
color for the tiles, is there? No. Shoot, that's right. Of course. Ugh. Man, no, dude, I... the limitations of Game Boy. It, it really, it's it's so interesting to see the way you have to problem solve for this thing. Quang, did you ever hear of someone called DJ Scotch Egg? DJ cool. Scotch Egg. I can't say yeah. I've heard of them. No. Sounds a very British. Uh, sounds like a very British artist. <laughs> very British. Apparently, he used uh, Game Boy as part of his live sets. So, like a chip tune. Nice. Um, I'm a big fan of Trominal, the German mm. chip tune artist on Game Boy. Yep. And he released uh, an album on Game Boy cartridge itself. So you can buy the Game Boy cartridge, and it has his album on the cartridge. It's yeah, beautiful. it's very good. Oh man, what am I doing here? I mean, uh, when you talk about Game Boy music, uh, this chiptune community was very much based around the Game Boy for the longest time because yeah. of uh, LSDJ, yeah, right. which was a software on cartridge, which allowed you to play mu or track music live on stage yeah. and whatnot. And um, many years ago, I was very much involved in that community. And it's always fun to see great Absolutely. That music. Yeah, there's some amazing talent there. There's still amazing talent there. And I do miss those guys quite a bit. Oh, yeah, the, the the Game Boy sound chip um, has has so much been similar, so much in common with sound chips like the the Yamaha sound chips. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Spectrum and the uh, NES, obviously, they have that same nostalgic sound to it. Um, they have their own differences, but it's nostalgic enough that it transcends all that. So when you hear a Game Boy soundtrack, it's um, it just brings all those memories back. And then there's like no room to move. And Snake Man, like, compared to the NES, you have all this room to maneuver, but on Game Boy, it's like there's like nowhere to go. It's a fairly claustrophobic <laughs> Mega Man experience. So I, th I think uh, NES screen is 256 pixels wide. Yeah, yeah, correctly. that's what they use: 256 by 224, but not always the full pixels. Yeah. Mm. So a Game Boy is what two thirds that 160. Yeah. So. <laughs> there's not there's not a lot of room. <laughs> I think it works, you know, it works well enough. I I, I actually think the, these uh, Mega Man games play pretty darn well, all, all told. Um, uh, they're great. I love this. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, um, earlier, obviously, we played Kid, Kid Dracula. And for me, that's always been Konami's Mega Man game. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. But anyway, okay, so we said we complete one level there. So, um, we could do Castlevania 2, we could do a Battletoads, we could do some Bonk. What are you guys in the mood for? Mm. Alpha Chicken? <laughs> well, this was a nice stream, but I'll be leaving now. Actually, quickly, I'm going to do a demonstration of, of this little game, because it's uh, really impressive. It's not Alpha Chicken. No, you said impressive, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Oh wow, simple Zach, just subscribe to the Patreon. If you did, come on over to our Discord uh, and hang out because we can yeah, chat about stuff there. there. It's a good yeah, time. the uh, the uh, Discord server for uh, DF, uh, Digital Foundry is very fun. Oh, I okay. Chat. Cans lose, and well, wow, I can't even say that. Who just donated there? Uh, he requested Battle Toads, and he's gonna get Battle Toads as soon as we finish this. All right. I guess I have to clarify. Do you want just Battle Toads straight up, or do you want Battle Toads in Ragnarok's world, which is the NES port in Ragnarok? Yeah, in Ragnarok's world. So let me know which which of the Battle Toad games you want. Okay. Oh so, yeah, Beer Alley. This is a fairly. This is a cool sorry. game. Have, have you played this, Quang? Yeah, I have indeed. Okay. Um, the whole series is great, from V Rally to the Game of Color versions as well. Yep, they've done yep. a great job. Yeah, it's really uh, yeah, they're using this old line trick for drawing the roads, but it's like really smooth and nice looking, and it plays really well. And yeah, it's pretty cool. And I love all the frame. Like, look at that! Like when you flip, all this. How smooth that is! That's so, so smooth. Many, that's so smooth. I mean, those are all like bespoke frames or, or like sprites, right? Like, because they can't rotate it, or can't. I, how 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 do you think they're doing that? Sorry, again. Uh, so when the car flips, I'd imagine that they're just using a bunch of different sprites, or are they like 
repositioning this like because you couldn't like rotate it right yeah yeah so, exactly every frame is every frame is drawn every frame yeah. is stored in memory which in itself is pretty impressive considering how many frames there seems to be for driving here like just yeah. turning left and right there's a lot of individual frames for that uh it's very fluid the v rally games were done by Lori ciel right or what used to be Lori ciel uh the jim, jim power Ball? guys yeah so they they, they did jim power which is a not a great game, but fantastic soundtrack. Uh, but they did Asterix and Obelix XXL, which is a really impressive 3D game on Game Boy Advance. They, wait, they are oh. they are stored frames copied in each frame. Okay, thanks, Jim. Yeah. yeah. So um, again, with the tiles, you have 256 tiles for the background and 256 tiles for the sprites. But with the 128 upper tiles shared between the two, so you don't really actually have that many tiles to work with. Oof. Um, so you have to load some in at, on the fly if you want more animation as well. And you can only have 10 sprites on a scan line, basically. Yeah, before, without, before well, without flickering. flickering. Yeah, yeah, before it starts flickering. Yeah, so there's tricks you can do where, where you alternate the, the sprite priorities. So yes, you'll get flicker, but because of the POV of the 30 frames per second and the blur, you get, you know... Uh, Good enough uh, view of more than ten sprites uh, on the line. Yeah, 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 I think on Ga Game Boy, Sprite Flicker actually works out a lot better than it does on, say, an, an, a an NES uh, on a CRT, yeah. where it's like instant and it's very obvious when it's happening. Whereas, yeah, I have played my Mega Drive copy of Battletoads, and it's awesome. I love. It's a good that, conversion of it. Actually, you know what? No, we're not going to do it yet, but I can probably end the stream with a little bit of that. We'll see. You're going to switch consoles on this at the very end? Maybe. On the fly. Yeah. You're a madman. All I have to do is resize it to fit inside the Game Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have problems with the aspect ratio. Oh, dang. You're right. We'll see. I don't know. Maybe I won't do that then. Next time. <laughs> I'll do a Mega Drive uh, stream. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, next up was Battletoads was requested. And... Uh, yeah, we're just going to do straight up Battletoads then. I have that floating Not here. Ragnarok. Not Ragnarok. Uh, there it is. There we go. Battletoads. That's all blurred out. There it is. Have you guys t taken time to play the new one yet? Uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't love it. I mean, I, it's a tricky one. I guess. I don't think we're the audience for it, maybe. No, we should be, though. I, I don't know. Like, it seems well made enough. It runs smoothly and everything. And it's there's some fun ideas in there. It's just I don't think it really nails Battletoads. Yeah. Uh, in, a, in a year where we got Streets of Rage 4. Like it just, because yeah. Battletoads is not just a brawler, obviously, and they do uh, vary things up as you'd expect, but whew, it's not quite. Uh, okay, so yeah, so this is the first Game Boy Battletoads game, and uh, it was pretty cool. Yura Pakomov says, it's the best streams ever, DF Forever. All right. I'm still trying to figure out what works on streams at all, so this is pretty cool. Oh, look at that! They've got they got slopes. Well, just no spinning coins. I I haven't mentioned this yet, Quang. Audie knows this story about when I was young. I used to always this was the one thing I was always envious about with the Game Gear was you play Sonic on that system, right? It has slopes yep. and it has spinning ring sprites, right? Yeah. Whereas on Game Boy, like on Mario games. They did not sp have spinning coins, and they did not have slopes. And that used to drive me nuts, because I was like, oh, I want the coins to spin like they do on NES and Super NES, but they did not. And I understand it now. It's like, all right, I see what they're, why they would have yeah. done that. But it's like, you know, I think it could have been done. It's just they chose to spend their resources elsewhere, probably John, for the better. I, I, John, I'm going to promise you now, right now, yeah. on live on stream, my next Game Boy game, there'll be spinning coins in it. Oh my god, thank you. You're a hero to me now. One sold already. 
Uh, there was the uh, super chat from the McEnroe saying, Hi from Switzerland. Great job, you guys. Oh, well, thank you. And Switzerland is cool. I like going to Switzerland. I haven't been able to you go like this year, there, though. Yeah. It's a beautiful place. I, I visited Lausanne a few times, and that's beautiful there. Oh, yeah. I was there for visiting Logitech once. It's a pretty oh. interesting place. The thing that's cool at Logitech is that they actually have a vending machine full of Logitech gear, which I love. <laughs> you know, it's like you go in the lunchroom and you're like, hmm, maybe I want to buy a mouse today. <laughs> you just, it's right there. Actually, I always wondered if it was, I, I don't even know. I, I, just the concept of having a vending machine with your own products in it is awesome. <laughs> Someone's say, asking if Super Mario Land 2 had spinning coins. Nope. That's, that's what I'm talking about. It does yeah. not have spinning coins, and neither does Wario Land. But they do have the sprites for it, because in Wario Land, when um, when you kill an enemy and a coin comes out of them, it spins. So that'll be us. That'll be on the sprite tile layer, and then the normal coins will be in the background layer. Yep. So yep. Unless you put in the, unless you put in the right place, you can't share them. But it also takes time to update tiles in the background and. Obviously, you want to save as many CPU cycles as possible doing other things. So animating coins isn't one of them. Exactly. And, you know, obviously, I mean, doing coins all as sprites would be such a, like, that would hurt, you know, because then you're just, like, contributing to the number of total sprites you can display on a line. And it just gets messy, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look at this. So, Parallax scrolling. I was asking if we're going to play Faceball 2000. I mean, that's the one that's kind of interesting, but I don't think it's very fun to play. I might load it up using the EverDrive because um, I don't actually have a cart of that. I do have the PC Engine CD version, though, which is really weird. Oh, who doesn't? That has, like, four-player split-screen. So the thing about um, Faceball 2000 is um, the guys in the Game Boy Development community, um, big shout-out to the guys in the Discord, GB Dev Discord, um, earlier on, they hacked the ROM so it runs in Game Boy Color double speed mode. Oh. It improves, the frame, improves the frame rate incredibly and it runs beautifully in double speed mode. Okay, now that I need to try. That sounds amazing. How many players could play Faceball 2000 at the same time? So, um, officially four. Yeah. There is the code in there for a 16 player version, but no Oof. one has the cable for that. Oh. No. See, that's, that's why it needed to be on the Lynx. <laughs> I, I was just thinking about that, uh, the Lynx. Uh, when me and John went to Jagfest, which is uh, the only Jag, Jag, Atari Jaguar festival in the world, uh, strangely, uh, there was a Atari Lynx, uh, what was the game? Che checkered Flag? It was Checkered Flag, yeah. Uh, there was a, ch a tournament for oh that. <laughs> how, how many people did we link up on Checkered Flag on Atari Lynx? I think it was just time? eight. Eight. I say just eight, but that's a lot, actually. For... That's a lot of people playing the Atari Lynx checkered flag at the same time. Yeah, same time. it was really fun, too. Yeah, it's a great, fun experience. Checkered flag on the Lynx is much better than the Jag version, actually. Much better. Jag much version's better. pretty bad. I think Mr. Atari won that yeah, tournament. Yeah, Mr. Atari did one. Yeah. Win. He did one, yes. I think I came in, like, second... <laughs> So massive pile up talking about spinning coins. Can you do it via the graphics data tile? Um, you can, but again, it, everything updating, uh, if you don't update anything live, right, whether it's tiles or tile data, it's going to take CPU cycles and you need those for other things. So it's very costly to do that. I, so, oh man, okay. I'm... <laughs> yeah. That's gonna that's gonna get me. That's they're pretty much taking a page from the speed. Can you imagine doing that on the real Game Boy screen? <laughs> I did I did it when I was young, yeah. but man. Oh, you, can, you, can see, you can see they've moved your, your your sprite to the far left to give you a little more time to see it, but still that's true. it's not much time. Alright. That's a cool game, but woof. Armin Q is asking, um, saying Dragon's Lair on Game Boy was amazing. Um, depends if you mean the black and white version. The DMG version is a re remake of a Spectrum game called Helter Skelter. It's a platformer. It's not that great. But the Game Boy Color version is incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. It, the DMG version is like the legend, right? The Dragon's Lair legend? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, roller coaster, that game. Yeah, roller coaster, yeah. Sorry, Hell Skelter, yeah, roller coaster. Um, 
Yeah, so it's on Spectrum game. All right, yeah. here we go. Now this is a classic. Dorakura Densetsu 2. This is this is actually one of my favorite games in the Game Boy right here. I yeah. love this game. It's great. The fact they brought the sub weapons back, which was a big thing from the first one. That's not right. Yeah, this is the Japanese version, so it has the cross. I always like their sprite proportions on on these games though, because like they're big enough to have a little detail, but they're like smaller than usual for Game Boy, so you get more screen real estate for level. Uh, it's yeah. it's really nicely proportioned for a Game Boy game. I always fought one of my the most impressive and like most Game Boy looking games I can think of all the time is uh, Gargoyles Quest from Capcom. Mm, red what armor. Think, yeah. That that art is just incredible. Like you can put any frame of that game, and like put it as a poster on your wall, and it's gonna look like real art. So now this is an interesting one here. Like this this ties into what we were talking about earlier about how um, uh, with such only 160 pixels horizontally, you know Castlevania traditionally had stairs, but I think mm. with the way stairs worked in Castlevania, it would have taken up too much space. You couldn't have realistically done it in a way that would have been Castlevania-like, so they devised this rope system instead. And I think yeah, it works think pretty well. It's, it's, a, it's a cool I think it's the same with, with slopes. It's the yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's the same as, like, the slope situation, where it's just, you know, there's not that much screen real estate, and doing that there, you know, especially with the way the stairs were used in Castlevania games, it would have just occupied a huge amount of screen space. And these older Castlevania games, you couldn't do anything on the stairs other than walk up them or down. It wasn't like on Rondo where you can jump on and off the stairs and such. Mm. No. I mean, you can do that on all the 16-bit ones, so. Gosh, I just love the, the art direction in this game. Like, they really make great use of the hardware. Like, just look at that with the water and then the all the temples in the background. And it's, just, it's really nicely done. Yeah, so they've taken a, a, a big care and consideration for the Game Boy screen itself. So you have a light background, you have a single color for the, for the background yep. elements. The and the, the two darker shades of gray um, they use for the foreground elements. So you know what a platform is and what isn't a platform. It's really nicely done. Yeah, it's the opposite of Bubsy 2, which is horribly done. <laughs> where everything uses the dark colors. So like the whole yeah. the whole background is all black all the time, and they try to use the light shades to fill in the detail, and it's just a mess. Yeah, I remember I had to play that for our episode. That was the worst part, making that episode. And then I had to play it too, because I had to film myself playing it on the <laughs> oh, Game yeah, Boy. Hold it in the Game Boy. That's right. Yeah, they do a lot of fun tricks with. Oh wait, look at this. I love these secrets where they just hide stuff. Up the rope, and then there's even oh man, you're right. Um, people are saying this has spinning coins, you're correct? It does, but these spinning coins are on the sprite layer, yeah. so they only appear when you kill something exactly. Which uh, Wario Land has as well, but it's the it's the other coins in the background layer that don't scroll. Yeah. Oof, there we go. I love all these spike walls. And man, this this game has seriously one of the best soundtracks on Game Boy as well. Just so that spike wall will be on the window layer. Aha, that makes a lot of sense. And that's why there's no um it's just blank. Yeah. <laughs> there. No texture. Yeah. I love seeing all these different tricks for using the window layer to do cool game ideas. A nice um, addition they had there, so you can slide down the ropes rather than walk down them. Hmm. Because yeah, yeah. The, the original game that wasn't possible was it? It was very <laughs> slowly crawl down or up. <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go. The cross, the forbidden cross, taken out of the U.S. version. Double Dragon on Game Boy is impressive. It had some wonderful music. Uh, I love that version. Yeah, it's it's uh, all right. Um, I'm not a big fan of Double Dragon in general. I think Double Dragon 2 is a more interesting game considering its origins, but... Yeah. Uh, one... Yeah, the music is pretty good in one on Game Boy. 
Yeah, Double Dragon's weird, because it turns out it's like the most popular bad series in existence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll get there one day. We'll get there. I, I imagine it's, it's obviously because it spawned... Uh, it, it was like one of the first to do what he did. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, uh, exactly. It, it was an originator. It, it was really important, yeah, so. obviously. Taking Renegade and, and Kuno Kun outside of the single arena and then having a scrolling level. So, oh, Double Dragon that. 2 is the one that was the Kunio game, right? And then 1 on and game 3, Boy, yes. yeah, on Game Boy. That was uh, Ranto Bangayan. Yep, that's why it kind of is very different from Double Dragon in some ways. Yeah. Uh, but that's not, so I'm a huge Kunio Kun fan, and I have most of the games, if not all of them, uh, actually physical. That's, right. that's pretty amazing. Uh, but uh, the Game Boy game is not the best in series, or that one in particular. There are other sports games, but for the Double Dragon Game Boy games, it's probably the best one. I enjoy it a lot, both of them actually. Yeah. Uh, Double Dragon has its merits. Uh, we, we might sound a little bit critical of it, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be too harsh on it. Like, it's interesting, it's an important series, but it's a flawed series. And I, I like talking about it. It's, you know, it's interesting to look back on what it did for the genre. It's just that it was outclassed <laughs> significantly. Oh, here we go. Boss time. Oh, it's this one. Okay. I haven't played this in a while, so I don't remember. Oh, it's... How is... oh great. Oh. What is the trick to this one? Oh, hit the crystal. Okay. Yeah, you're pretty good at this game. Yeah, I, I, this is, it has such a fun, uh, it's just got a cool pace to it, especially with the music and everything. It's just, it's perfect. Have you guys Oops. taken time to play the, the third one? Yes. Oh, Le yeah, I like Legend. I have that. I should put yeah. that in next, maybe. I, I know it's. it's it gets, it gets a bad rap, but it's better than people think it is. I agree. It's, it's better than the first one, for sure. It's just not as good as this one. Yeah, Legends is an interesting one, for sure. Yeah, I wish I wish I had a better rap, because I think the main character is really cool. Yeah. yeah. If I remember correctly, they've written her out of the canon now. It's a shame. They also, 64, Castlevania 64, with one of my favorite. In the series, so... Oh, yeah. I love Castlevania 64. I know it's not popular to say that, but I'm I'm a fan. Oh, I'm a big fan. I think it's got a cool atmosphere to it. It's a, It feels good to control. I mean, it's it's really... It's a neat game. I mean, yes, compared to, like, SOTN, it's not good. It, you know, it's... It's just so different that I don't really think it's fair to compare. Dark Lizard mentions... Um, if you cover the dragon, can you do the movie? Which is quite great because you guys covered Street Fighter the movie. Oh yeah, yeah. So well, should we mention that uh, these days, if you pre-ordered your Street Fighter the movie copy from Eighty Eight Films, you will find that the John and I did the audio commentary for that, and also the uh, special bonus feature talking about Street Fighter the video game series. The only downside to that bonus feature is that. It was like, yeah, you can you can use footage from the movie, but you can't use any footage from the games. Yeah, it's <laughs> the nature. But that's right. just that's just the licensing stuff, right? Like you know, that gets tricky. But I think we did a pretty good job with the limitation there. Yeah, I think so too. It's pretty fun. People it if they see it, so for anyone who did, thank you. It did sell. I'm hoping, I'm hoping one of you got you guys will maybe can get to do Double Dragon then as well. Um. Uh, well, just keep your eyes open. <laughs> so Fabio right there asks, uh, am I going to do a video on the Polymega? I am eventually going to do a full video on it, but I'm probably going to do a stream on it first. So keep an eye out here on the stream. Not today, but you know, one of these days we'll get a, we'll, we'll get a stream going with that thing. The Street Fighter movie had a video game series. Oh, I did actually have <laughs> two, two games. Two yeah, different it, games. it did. They're very different, but cool. So when we do talk about that in the audio commentary, quite extensively, in fact, we got That's to right. talk. We got to talk to the creator of that game before doing the commentary. So it was pretty fun. 
That was a fun project, I have to say. I really enjoyed doing. Yeah, it uh, was a lot of fun. When we started talking about doing the streams, one of the ideas that I had was to do audio comment, live audio commentaries for some of the episodes we worked on together. Like, oh Final yeah. Final and I think that could still work. So if people want to see that, uh, let us know because we would watch it live with you and then talk about producing those episodes because the ones that you and I work together on tend to be a bit longer and a little bit more uh, involved. Yeah, exactly. So it could be fun to kind of shed some light on how we did certain things. Well, it allows you to be a little more ambitious when you have a second person helping out, basically. So, John, yeah. you can see the window layer in this, actually, and you yeah. can see that there's no, no transparency again. Yeah, on this yeah, bike. yeah, exactly. I, I've always noticed that here. It just covers up the ropes there. It's... It's effective enough. I mean, they really couldn't have done it any other way, I guess. It makes it's a good use of it. Yeah. Although I'm not 100% sure how they've done the right-hand side. I, I was just going to say that how there's like non-moving right-hand side and the left-hand side as well. I'm going to have to check the the VRAM for that. I'm going to have to double check that cuz I don't know how they've done that. Oh. There we go. I love these this is one thing I love about this Game Boy game is like you have a lot of these little single screen puzzles kind of that are like it's surprisingly fun and to, to just play through. These it has a different flavor than most other Castlevania games and it just it works. Yeah, I think that's the interesting thing. Like this one goes much more for its own thing due to the nature of the handheld. Absolutely. That's what you get some fun experimentation with it. So yeah, I think it goes back to people making games for the hardware itself rather than just porting it from different systems. You yeah. have to understand the hardware its limitations. Yeah. yeah that's where it's uh, quite frustrating, especially for people like you know John and myself at times, uh, doing research and talking about these retro games for Game Boys that the reputation it had for so long was that it was just a port machine for the NES. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that... I mean, that was the case here and there, but I mean, the amount of games on Game Boy that are original and only can be enjoyed on Game Boy. Uh, it's not really fair to say that. Yeah, Absolutely. even the ones that are ports, you've had to, they had to rework them quite oh, significantly. Geez. <laughs> I saw that one coming. Actually, okay, so let's, um, let's, let's, I've been playing some of this. Let's switch to Castlevania Legends, which is a less common game. Yes, I think I have it here in this cool black G uh, Game Boy with one of the LCD screens in it. So, uh, here we go. So, yes, Castlevania Legends. Per Vertex is asking me if it did it with V blanks, the, the spikes um, and the wall on the right side. I don't think so because the way the V blank. Well, the H-Bank works is you're going to do it at the end of the scan line, but they've managed to put a static line before the scan line ends. The only way I think I would do it is to use a layer of sprites. You can use a single sprite and then move it with the H-Bank uh, H blank and overlay it. So maybe that with a sprite layer? I have to check. Oh, does this seem to have a custom palette? For... Huh. Possibly. That's great when it's, when it's some of the games have custom palette for Super Game Boy. I love this uh, this music in this first level, actually. It's quite uh, good. <laughs> it's a catchy track. Yeah, they're doing custom palettes. You can see how... Uh, that's cool. So the Game Boy DMG actually has two palettes for sprites and a palette for backgrounds. Uh -huh. And it looks like what they've done here is in the H bank again, in the window layer, they've switched the palettes one more time to get you the purples for the bottom layer. Smart way to do it. Makes a lot of sense. But how? I guess that's a feature that this is, that would make sense on the Super Game Boy, uh, where they kind of figure out like what palette corresponds to these colors when using the Super Game Boy specifically. I don't yeah, know how, how yeah, have, have you have you actually looked much into like the interface for working with Super Game Boy? Because that's I guess I'm wondering how that actually works from the development side. Uh, 
Not yet, to be honest. I, I, all I know is that you send packets of data when you want to trigger a certain thing. So I imagine on the H blank, they would send some new pallet data to change the pallet over at the right time. Oh. Let's see. So yeah, this game kind of starts outside. Uh, th this actually does feel more like the first Castlevania adventure, but like smooth where that one just runs so poorly that, that game has screen tearing you know that it's <laughs> they, but you know it was 1989 it was so early i i can absolutely forgive them for it it has good music at least that's true i think also also the main sprite feels like a downgrade from castlevania 2 i agree yeah. well most of the sprites in this game from like the uh maggots to the ghost flying around yeah. they're kind of simplistic and yeah the, it's a game, <laughs> the like... ghosts are kind of adorable actually but but uh they actually you're right the artwork in general is a step down from the second castlevania for sure like just look at these tiles in the backgrounds like it doesn't have any of that uh all the flourishes that you saw in the second game but it was a different team that worked on this for sure <laughs> Yeah. And I understand but, also they were quite rushed to do this one as well. Oh, that, that's never good. That's never good for getting stuff done. <laughs> oh. Yo. But still, it's not bad. Yeah, see, like, you wouldn't have seen so many empty backgrounds uh, in the second game like this. Just, there's a lot of empty space. Mm hmm. But you know, it plays perfectly fine. It's it's a solid little action game. Yeah, it's just not enough after two, considering how good two is. The, I guess but the main thing fine. is there's so much time where you're just kind of walking, and there's not that much going on. Whereas in two, is like every screen is densely packed with just little micro challenges. Mm -hmm. They kind of keep the player on their toes all the time. Uh, yeah, and... I think Castlevania game games work better when you're in the dungeons in, inside yeah. the castle. Exactly, exactly. Which is why doing that Mega Man style castle selection was such a clever move for that game, where it's just like, yeah, it's all these like dungeon like, castle like environments. Well, that's interesting. Zombies. Yeah, oh. Oh no, it's like Bubble Bobble, but with zombies. <laughs> Someone's asking us for our opinion the on heck? Castlevania Netflix anime. Okay, what is this room about? Oh, and that's death, okay. That's death. <laughs> so I, I think the anime was... was yeah, I love the cartoon series uh, quite a bit, so I think it's uh, great. I think it's exactly what you need to do with a game like Castlevania to make it interesting in animated form. Yeah. So, I it's think really well written. So. I think choosing Castlevania 3 to base it on is a, it was a smart move as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, there's those cute little ghosts again. I love <laughs> it. Man. Yeah, it's very relaxing to just kind of do these retro streams. We do have some more stuff lined up, though, for, for streaming, including um, once we actually start getting the next-gen consoles. I definitely want to stream those. Just for fun. Did you say you had Donkey Kong 94? I do. Of course, it's a classic. I could do a little Don that, Donkey Kong '94. It's quite, it's quite interesting. Obviously, it starts off like a port of the arcade version, but then yeah. obviously it opens up. Okay, we're just bouncing around through here. So, <laughs> um, actually, I wonder. Somebody's just asking, can you use Super Game Boy Two in a PAL Super Nintendo? I suspect not. I don't know. Uh, I don't think it would need work to well. It, yeah, but... exactly. Um, and nobody wants to run Super Game Boy 2 at 50 hertz either. Nobody no, wants that. That would be horrible. No. Uh, let's see here. Um, actually, before we get to that, uh, I should I should do a Turtles game. Actually, which Turtles game, oh. Audi? If I I have all three right here, so which one? Nice. Let's see. Uh, since we're in the Castlevania mood, let's do three. All right, we'll see some three. Yeah, the the, the uh, Turtles Castlevania game. That's right. Yep. Turtlevania. Turtlevania. 
Oh, now, why, why isn't that a, 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 a genre that's not used more? Turtlevania? There was uh, Dangers of the Ooze on PS3 and 3DS. That kind of similar. Um, but that's kind of the, it for that type of genre. Oh, yeah. So I am I am using uh, a wireless 8-bit dough pad. I haven't charged <laughs> it in a bit. And the battery's dead, so I'm going to go obtain a uh, non-wireless controller. Which is okay, because the Super NES is sitting next to me. So let's go into the bin. Yeah, Massive Pilot saying that it's funny how you think the Game Boy is more powerful than the standard NES. Um, in some ways, yes. In some ways, actually, no. Weirdly. Yeah. I would say they're comparable. Yeah, there's some trade-offs, but I mean, the the Game Boy was pushed much further, obviously, and it could be pushed much further. Actually, but... gentlemen, this is what I should have been doing from the beginning. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, it's the Super Game Boy uh, Commander or whatever from Hori. Yeah. Love this thing. Great controllers. So this... I hardly hold on these days. Yeah, you're right. So for those watching from home, of course... This thing is, uh, clearly it's made specifically for Super Game Boy by Hori, and it has a bunch of specific shortcut buttons. So I, I guess it's the same as normal, but they kind of make it a way. Uh, you can actually switch between Super Famicom and Super Game Boy mode, too. So, let's see here. There we go. Oh, I see Alberto Gonzalez is in the chat. Uh... When talking about Game Boy, he was probably the best Game Boy composer. Oh, Alberto's here? Excellent. Yeah, he's here. He did uh, Asterix, of course, one of my dear favorites. But uh, Smurf's Nightmare, if you listen to that soundtrack, that might be the finest music composed in the official Game Boy game ever made. So do check wow. that out. Okay, so we'll just start. Here we go. Oh yeah, so the video is small. Let's see if I can get it up close. So for this, uh, this, yeah. this is the pad for everybody to check out. And yeah, it has the same kind of color scheme and look. It's got the fake speaker in the corner. Um, yeah, it's a cool. It's a really cool pad. So I think in this one, yeah, oh. you you start out as Michelangelo and you have to rescue the rest of the turtles. Yep. Yeah. And unlock your other powers. Metrovania style. Wait, I said that the type A. Oh, actually, no, I don't want. Uh, <laughs> when you're using this, you don't want that. That's only for if you're using a Super NES controller. Okay, how do? I... Okay, it's a single. So I gotta get used to that again. So yeah, now now it's like proper Game Boy controls. Did you Wait, change the controls already at the start of this game? Am I doing something with speed here? It's running. I think it's like running in slow motion. I think I've got like the uh, the slow mode on here. There. There we go. That's the correct speed. <laughs> so yeah, there's a bunch of shortcut buttons on this thing as well. Right. So and yeah, you can mess you can mess around with it. There we go. <laughs> you start outside it's like keep out all right <laughs> now we're back yeah this is a quite uh, overlooked turtles game um many so, years ago i did a project covering every turtles game ever made and uh this was one that kind of look at that left the most impression on me and that's I love how they actually write Cowabunga at the bottom. It's funny. Just in case you forget. It's important <laughs> to spend screen real estate on this. Oh, so people are saying you don't have sound? No sound? <sighs> There's no music to Okay. Uh-oh. That's weird. Yeah, I'm not seeing I'm any... Back. I don't see any music. Oh. 
There we go. It's back. I quite like how the um, you've obviously used smaller sprites for this. There's, there's, yeah, the first there's a uh, a mute button right there. That's what I hit. There should be the oh. audio should be back now. See, this, this is when you're using the the Hori Super Game Boy Commander. You've got you've got to be ready for anything. I was not. It's got slow motion functions. It's got mute functions. You can do anything with this. So yeah, this this game, I guess. So basically, if we bring up the map here, uh, you can see. So is that supposed to be the icon for Splinter, or is that like the boss? Because it looks. <laughs> but this is basically it. This is the huge map that you explore, and you're basically looking for the other turtles. Mm. Which, if you go to the menu here, you could select them, but obviously they are currently captured. And I really like the art there, by the way. That's a nice renditions of the turtles there. Oh yeah, it's incredible. I mean, I really loved it. So it's similar to a Turtles Tournament Fighters on Super Nintendo. I think you had the same artist working on it. Yeah, which so, that that's uh, you're right. That has an excellent style to it. Yeah. Specifically, yeah. Super Nintendo version. Yeah. Well, no, the Mega Drive version looks good. It just plays. Ah, uh, it doesn't look that hot though. It's it sounds hot. Uh, it doesn't play uh, very good. I think it looks fine. I think it's cool looking. I never liked the uh, the designs on the Mega Drive game. So I have to say, even though the sprites are smaller in this version of Turtles, previous from the previous two, the, the designs are better. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Oh yeah, I mean the first game, the sprites are huge, but the huh. animates kind of limited. In uh, the, sec the second game, they're kind of tall and lean. I love how in the second one, uh, they use it's like they just animate the the top torso and the legs separately in a way. Yeah. It looks really awkward. Oh, we're in a totally different place now. Maybe it's the Technodrome. I think this is the best of the Game Boy trilogy as as a complete package. Though I think two is the one people are probably most nostalgic for, back to the series yeah. or back from the series. Um, but I always felt this is the best game. It's one of the best Turtles games. Yeah. For me, it's the first one I played, which I played the most because I had that one. Uh, I've not played this much because I don't own this one, but mm. I know it's quite difficult to get hold of now. Yeah. yeah quite. That's why I have the Japanese version here. Which I have a, not that that one's cheap either, but you know, uh, it's the cheaper I, one. Yeah, I have a box Japanese and a box U.S. copy of this. Nice. I don't know which one is harder to get. I guess the Japanese version. For this game? Yeah, I think the U.S. version is more expensive, but neither are cheap. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Maybe not though. It, it tends to fetch a lot. Oh yeah, the setup's working out pretty well. I'm just using this uh, Sony CRT monitor. This is not; it's just my PC monitor, but mm -hmm. uh, feeding the retro tank SCART to it works pretty well. Yeah, when we stream, we use just a retro tank for all our consoles because uh, it has composite and the SVDL. Uh, and a component as well, and that's pretty much what we need for most of the consoles. Absolutely. Yeah, this this is um. How many has anybody in the chat actually had this game back in the day? Cause I I've always heard about this one, but I never talked to anybody that actually owned it at the time. I guess it came out pretty late. Yeah, it was a pretty late game. Yeah. But still, it's pretty cool. Alright. We should start thinking about what's the next game. Because we're just like... We're just playing game Donkey Kong roulette. that people picked, right? Donkey Kong 94? Yeah. Okay. It's on. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying <laughs> that. Then after that, I probably have to head out after that. Because I work tomorrow, so... Same. I gotta finish a video project, and then the week gets busy again. Uh, I've gotta finish my game for tomorrow, so it's the last day tomorrow. Wait, really? Oh, uh, so this is your final chance to make some changes to it? Yeah, well, 
I, I have. We, I think we send it off to production end of the month, but oh, I want right. it to be finished tomorrow and not have to do any more because obviously sales finish tomorrow as well. Hmm. Right. Cool. Is there a specific time of day it stops, or is it just like midnight? I'm just doing midnight GMT. Yeah. Right, right. Oh. This game is a bit confounding, though. You're just kind of going in all directions, searching around. That's oh. the Metrovania, isn't it? Do akeru ni wa kado ga iruzo. Okay. I also like to go get that. Uh, someone, uh, I guess again, Quang, someone's asking what your game is. So the game you can get for Game Boy, um, Game Boy and Game Boy Color is Super Jetpack DX. And it's available at pocketpixel.design. And last, tomorrow is the last day, right? Of what you're saying. Tomorrow is the last day, yeah. So every pre-order um, gets an, a ROM with a name in the thank you opening screen. And also, we actually do, we're doing a draw for so every order gets put into a draw to win a customized Jetpack DX um, Game Boy Color, which mm. looks beautiful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So fully modded with a, a backlit LCD um, IPS screen um, and a beautiful artwork on the body as well. And it's, uh, yeah, I, I don't really want to give it away, but I said I would. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So... Now it's time for Conky Dong. <laughs> Conky Dong? Wait, wait maybe not. <laughs> uh, where is where is Donkey Kong? Now I have all these empty Game Boy shells here. I was <laughs> leaving them loose on the desk. So recently, I, I sold a lot of my collection off recently, but I had to check every single one to make sure they're okay. And there's something quite nostalgic and satisfying of opening the little case and then. They, oh, I know. I love it. I'm going to um, put this one back nostalgic. in the case and you just click it shut. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's so good. Love it. I do I do plan to look at some Jaguar games someday. Oh, I'd love to stream some Jaguar. Oh, shout out yeah. to Mr. Rivero who's here in the chat. He's one of the guys that got me into the Jag. Oh, cool. Ah, oh, here we go. I love that introduction screen. I have and that's a, a cu copy of X custom. That that right Game there Boy. is brilliant. It's like the title screen looks so cool on the Super Game Boy. It's a shame you're, you're not showing the game, Super Game Boy border because it has a beautiful border too. Oh, yeah. So there's a super chat asking consider DF Retro for engines? Example, DF Retro Renderware. There we go. If I take off the uh, the Game Boy border for a, for a moment there, since this is the last game, I'll just do that. Now you guys can experience the full Super NES border glory. Uh, do I want to... I can... Oh, you can actually... There we go. Let's do that. Yeah, John, I think you missed the Super Chat oh. question. Oh, consider DFR for engines renderware. Mm. Oh, that's an interesting one. Hmm. Because there is something that might come along with that, actually. I just need to finish it. All right. So, yeah. Okay. Oh no, did I hit the speed button Slow. again? <laughs> Why do I keep doing that? Like I need to figure out how this how this actually like works. Cause it's running really slow. Cause I, I was holding it like a um Dang it, there there it is, it's back. But now I'm okay. Now I got it. So I've been playing it on with a Super NES pad. So the buttons here, 
Like I was trying to use these instead. Now we got it. Got that good. You're right. Th this was always one of the best things about it was. Oh man, I'm doing terrible. About this, um, how clever this was to start with this being like Donkey Kong, and then it's like, oh, it reveals it to be something much more. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's really awesome. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> that's, that's good. I can't hear the music myself. Oh no! Come on, more. You can get it. <laughs> I'll well, see you, Simon. Glad you could join. Yeah, that's a... Hi, Simon. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Wow, three in a row. Nice. Yeah, the custom uh, colors that they do for this version is quite nice, actually. Yeah. This was this has one of the best um, Super Game Boy implementations, I think. Yeah, they put a lot of effort into it. But I guess this game launched right around the time of the Super Game Boy. Yeah, at least in Europe it was the launch it's... title, I think. I always wondered why they had... Um... Metroid 2 on the cover. <laughs> oh, did they? Yeah. Hmm. I think it's the big box version. Oh, there's the ladder. Gotta wait for it to go up. You can throw the hammer upwards and catch it again. Huh. I know. It's a, it's a nice uh, quality of life change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. That's, that's the thing about making old games uh, in modern times. You can look at where old games, where the floors are, and you can say, it'd be great if you could take the hammer with you up ladders, oh. things like that. You can't even look away for a second, and it's just... <laughs> <laughs> the sombrero, got that. God, I'm doing terrible with this. It's probably because it's getting late. Um, when are you doing an actual DF Retro episode? Um, the last one was kind of Tony Hawk. See, I would Which do, I would, combo. I would do them all the time if I could. But the problem is that, uh, they take a long time to produce, and you know, it's like next gen consoles basically. So I blame the PS5 and the Series X for. for preventing me from doing more DF Retro. <laughs> I would totally be doing them right now if I could. But, if man. If we could stop making new consoles, that would be great. Yeah, just, yeah. you know, hold off a little bit so I can do more. Yeah, the DF Retro episodes, man, they're just, they, they take more time than anything else and that's mainly my own fault because I care about them the most. You know what I mean? So I don't, I try to go pretty far on them. So, I don't know. It's 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 a tricky thing. Hmm. I've I've been kind of debating back and forth on how I want to do this stuff. Oh, I gotta. Lord X is asking what our favorite Game Boy games are. Oh, favorite Game Boy game. Hmm. That's a good question. I might actually go with Castlevania too. Good choice. Just for nostalgia's sake, I'll say Asterix on Game Boy. I mean, it's also a good game. And, uh, oh, yeah, I have yeah. to get all those good things. Music. I would say Tetris, because that's the one I play the most, but that's kind of a cop-out answer. Uh, other than that, I'd probably have to go Batman, the first Batman. With the gun? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Batman gun. Yeah, I love that. Gosh, Sunsoft Batman. was on fire back then. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean... For DF Retro episodes, definitely a lot of stuff I want to do. And we'll try to do more next year for sure. And I want to do an, at least another one this year before we finish up. Just these darn new consoles, man. 
Not that they're not interesting to look at, but you know, it's uh Yeah. We'll see. Oh wow. Uh, I'm also trying to do um I don't know. Do I have the technology to do this with a game gear? I mean I guess technically a game gear with the uh, McWill VGA out would work. Yeah. Can you just do the Mega SG with the adapter? Yeah, I could do that as well. That's a good point. I could... Yes, that's true. So yeah, that was the... Um, so then they open up to this map here. This was a, kind of the big reveal. Here we go. And then it becomes more of a puzzle platformer. I, I love the Mario sprite in this. He's so small but awesome. And he looks okay. sli slightly <laughs> off-model in a way that like reminds me of, of Wario in War Mario Land 3. Hmm. I like how they're using the single screen to make the, the puzzles. Well, they're not always single screen, though. That's the thing, is there is scrolling yeah, in this game. Yeah. Uh, most of the later puzzles have scrolling. It's just these early ones are mostly single screen. Do, do, do. Any oh, yeah. plans for a Game Boy related DF Retro episode? Actually, there is a Lost episode out there somewhere, which oh. I don't think we ever posted. Uh, where we in the heat of summer recorded a handheld yeah you and, that, I, and I it just that. we it yeah it was so hot and we just we couldn't focus and uh we just decided to do it one other time when there wasn't uh record heat in frankfurt so maybe in the future sometime and that was yeah 2019 yes oh yeah there's this this part here where um what's the button for yeah there we go yeah, you can. Also, the lovely use of palettes here, the green and the blue. Yeah. Um, How far do we have to go back to be considered retro these days? <laughs> Someone's asking. I say, ten, uh, I always say ten years. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. The headstand. That's great. Look at that. Yeah, ten years for me is kind of the cutoff point. I generally say two generations. That's that's also a pretty good answer. You know, maybe that actually makes more sense now with uh, as long as console generations have become. Because <laughs> like PS4 and Xbox One now are um, seven years old. Yeah. Which is. You had like PS2. What PS2 was what ten years old before they retired it. Um. Yeah, it was. It lasted a long time. Absolutely. Oh, gotta have the slot machine in there. That's good. All right. Uh, you know, I think it's it is getting a bit late here, you yep. guys, for us. So, yeah, I guess it was another fun stream. Uh, we got some more stuff coming up this week, I think. Some other fun ideas. But I w thanks for joining me as always. Well, Audi, as always. And Quang, of course. It's a real pleasure to have you on here. And it's really g great to chat again. Uh, normally, normally we hang out at the various trade shows, none of which happened this year. <laughs> so it is. Uh, this is kind of the way to make it up for it. So, And yeah, definitely folks you know if you're interested in some game boy action go check out his game it's uh, super jetpack dx looking great so um to everybody in the chat thanks as always for joining us and you know if if you're a patron uh come on over to the discord i'll be hanging out over there as always and always interested in suggestions and other ideas like that so uh yeah and appreciate everyone for watching so have a wonderful evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you're at, and we'll see you next time.